Yo, yo, there we are. There we are. Check, check, check. One, two. Man, what's going on? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. What's that music? <laughs> Danny, all of a sudden, we was cool, man. <laughs> there. We in the club. <laughs> man, we buzzing cousins and everything. Hey, I don't know what the hell's going on. I think Spectrum's down or the internet's fucking yo, with yo, us yo, over here on this are. side. There we uh, are. Check, check, check. One, two. Uh, oh, my bad, guys. That's me. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, That's my playback. It's picking it up. Fuck, yeah. I keep forgetting. Nah, it's all good. We here. Nah, because, yeah, I'm live here. <sighs> We good. Shit. What's cracking, everybody? <laughs> to make matters worse. <laughs> no, nah, it's all good. So don't. I mean, obviously, if the audio sounds good, let us know if the yeah, audio sounds good. There's a lag for sure, like video-wise, but you sound good. It's all good in the hood. Block talk, baby. We here. It's Monday. Um, there's some things that we'd like to address, but before we do that, we want to take care of our sponsors because if it wasn't for them, hey, they keep the lights on in here. Starting off with uh. The Herrera Group. Uh, everybody cool back there? Oh, yep. I thought your camera fell down. <laughs> no, it's my phone. The Herrera Group, your trusted partner for real estate services with over two decades of experience in the real estate industry. The Herrera Group, Inc., is here to guide you. They are owner-operated, ensuring that you receive personalized service. They work hands-on, right? Right here in the Inland Empire. Whether you're buying, you're selling, you're investing. I mean, we know a lot of... Californians are trying to get out. You know, they're trying to move out. I mean, they're saying it's too high here to live in Cali. And maybe you're just trying to get rid of that home. Well, I'll tell you what. Hit up um, my peoples over there. Herrera Group, Inc. Maria will take care of you for sure. They got you covered. Their motto is no hassle, and it's all hustle. That, that means they're going to hustle to get your home sold. Or if you're in a position to buy one, too, as well, look into them. Discover them by calling 951-712-6068, 951-712-6068 to start your real estate journey today. Also, today's show is brought to you by a little bit of the cross promotion over here. Um, shout out to them damn Mexicans. <laughs> it's TDM. It's like my primos. Um, pero they're TDM instead of ODM. <laughs> But I, I, I found liking to these guys right here, man. There's an up-and-coming podcast. They're based out of Texas. So if you're ever in the Texas area, you need to get on a platform, go hit up the homies, them damn Mexicans. This is their YouTube channel right there. I kind of like the logo. And then, of course, their Instagram is at the damn Mexicans. Go follow, support La Raza today. And then also another podcast we like to shout out is uh, Latin X Hip Hop. And, um, yeah, so there's our IG right there. So if it's all about hip-hop, also Texas-related right there. But, I mean, it's everything. Anything goes. Internet's worldwide, right? So uh, they're touching upon any artist as well. You see Mexican OT right there on their page. Uh, definitely worth um, following and also subscribing to. And that's what we do, you know. We cross-promote, help our brothers. shout out to everybody out there in Texas. Latinx hip-hop for today's show as well. So muchas gracias. Thank you, guys. Here we are live from the Blackout headquarters, man. We are back. You know, I'm at my desk. This is my comfort zone. I told Dorothy Nader Danny, man, I, I want to, you know, kind of just sit up here and, and go through my laptop, you know, as, as um, because sometimes I can't read my phone. You know what I mean? It'd <laughs> be small. But for the most part, are we still glitching or it looks like we're uh, everybody now? said the yeah. sound is good, but it's like picking up. I don't know. All right. Let's just be thankful. It's we're okay, on. Danny. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. You know? It's going to be okay, Danny. So we're good. I see that. We're it's sweating. okay. <laughs> Sound is good. That's what's most important. I was telling everybody, man. So it may look like we pop locking up in this bitch, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you make sure you get my tut on. You know what I mean? Uh, sitting behind me, man. Let's go to the crew over there. My name's ODM. <laughs> Who's on the couch? <laughs> Wants to go first. CP, ladies <laughs> first. Fucking hooligans out here. Crystal <laughs> Perez, a.k.a. CP, a.k.a. La Blackiana. You know what it is, Money Boons, a.k.a. Dinetta Luna. Yeah, I feel like we're in timeout over here, huh? Get <laughs> <laughs> your asses over there we're now. We're in timeout. It's all good. <laughs> what's up, big boy? Oh, what's up, man? I'm Big Master Mas. How you guys doing? Host of the Movies Imas oh, yeah. episode. Host, host of the Movies Imas podcast. That's right, brother. On the Blackout channel. We appreciate that, dog. Look at you, man. You guys, what, your fourth weekend? Uh, yeah, we're going to do episode five this week. We got uh, Greg and I review America, uh, not America, me, Blood In, Blood Out. That's the big yeah. one. Let's That's right. I told Fu, I said, man, you should do some, like, recap some old school, like, Chicano movies, man. I go, mm. that'll definitely spark some attention because 
that was actually interesting. We already recorded that one, and I there was a lot of facts that you you brought out, you know, to 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 resurface, bro. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of stuff I found out behind the scenes that I didn't even know, and there was a couple things that I got clarification on that I had heard rumors about, like the the supposed five part or five hour long movie that you know turned out to be the original cut. That was true, you know. That was something that I wasn't sure was actually true, but yeah, it turned out to be true. That was an original. The original five cutting. hours was the original recording. Yeah, it was original. The original recording of Blood and Blood Out was five hours. It was uh, actually it was four hours and forty five minutes, I believe. So close to five hours. Um, it's ridiculous, right? Uh, <laughs> but it was also he did that because he had a plan to do a two part movie. Originally, I heard it was a three part movie, but it makes a lot more sense now when I watch Sick. it that it, it would be it would have been a two part movie. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what he wanted to do. That was his goal. There was actually like a whole storyline that was removed with Paco that had a love interest. That would have been in like part one. Here we go. Right, so that's pretty crazy. So where's the rest of the footage? That's what I want to know. Is it somewhere, in somewhere, somewhere in uh, which I also found out? Did you know Disney owns the rights to Blood in Blood Out, and Damn. Blood in Blood Out was their first rated R movie that they ever owned. Dang, that's kind of a fun right? fact. So uh, it's locked somewhere in their vault. But Wait, there is Disney a, owns Blood and Blood Out? Yeah. yeah <laughs> we <laughs> homie. When they and we still can't get a disc kind of beachy Disneyland. But look, <laughs> but look when they, when they <laughs> dropped it, when they dropped it, so the both so the movie Blood and Blood Out and American Me were filmed uh, simultaneously. Um, and they only came out a year apart because Blood and Blood Out, when uh, the company Hollywood Pictures, uh, they did not want to release it as... Blood in, blood out. They wanted to release it as a diff different title, so they had to come up with a different title, which took about a year. And the secondary title you'll find it on there is called uh, Bound by Honor. Yeah, we all knew that one because yeah. I remember when the name change happened and um, they was like, oh, it was Bound by Honor. No, it then it's Blood in, blood out. But it was originally Blood in, blood out, right? Yeah. And originally I know why Disney out. wanted to own it then. Yeah. So, well, well, took the blood out, right? The conspiracy side? Shit. Probably. I don't know. Blood in, blood out. What's it called when they uh, harvest that energy from kids? I don't, I don't know. I haven't gotten that That's far why enough. they wanted it. No. Speak on it, <laughs> CP. Speak on it. I'm in my conspiracy bag already. But, but yeah, that's uh, that was it. There's, you know, there's a little few other things that came out about that movie too. Um, but uh, so you, if you guys want to watch uh, the whole take on it, and I'm sure you guys, most of you have seen Bound by Honor, or now you got me calling it Bound by Honor, fucking blood and blood <laughs> out. <laughs> Go check out uh, Movies Imas. Um, that is every Wednesday. And you guys are talking about it oh, this Thursday. Wednesday. Thursday. Thursday. Spencer. Thursday. Thursday, homie. 8 o'clock, eh? Shout out to IG. Uh, Movies.wibe.mas. I like that Technicolor distortion right there. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm going to start doing that for all the uh, all the intro shots Nice on there. So. Yeah. Oh, shout out to old school Becky Lou commenting oh. on your shit. Yeah. Hey. Make it clap. Yeah, we kind of got a lot. We go out in a lot of Here's love from us. different people, and uh, the vid the videos have gone. You know, the, some of the reels have gone viral. Right yeah, but, <laughs> oh yeah, I know that was a random <laughs> impromptu shoot that we did uh, here in the studio. Right there. <laughs> yeah, all the sponsors. All the sponsors. <laughs> and, and, and real quick, Tomas, yeah. who's your partner? Uh, Greg, my homie Greg from. Uh, so I've known Greg since uh, college. That's where I first met him. We went to the Art Institute together. And it was funny because in this last episode, we actually talked about uh, one of the first times we hung out was us watching the leak footage of Deadpool when they dropped the test footage for Deadpool, which like sparked the whole series. Yeah. Of movie. So that was one of the things we, we talked about how, you know, back in the day, that's how we kind of met. You know, we, we had a group of friends who were all chilling there watching this, you know, getting all excited because we're watching Deadpool, a good version of Deadpool, because mm. the prior version of that was a trash-ass version from the movie Wolverine. Was that five hours long, too? No. Mm -hmm. That was just leaked with poor CGI. You know, Excuse me? It was leaked with poor CGI. What the fuck is CGI? Like the That's, digital stuff, right? Yeah, the digital stuff. So, oh, okay. So when Wolverine got leaked, uh, like everything in there, you could still see, like, instead of seeing the metallic claw for, for uh, Wolverine, you saw, like, an actual bone claw coming out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, for, like, uh, even the same thing for the Deadpool version that they had in there. When his claws or sword uh, blades come out, it was like you could see it was a plastic thing just that someone was pushing out. Oh. You know, versus what it should have looked like. Okay. You know? But they made him look really bad in that version, so that's why when the Deadpool movie came out, you know, it was it was a really good, like, well written and to the core version of Deadpool that we should have seen. Right on. You well, know? shit, man. Check them out. Movie Z Moss every Thursday, 8 p.m. They got a new episode dropping, and uh, shout outs to Greg as well, your co-host, man. Yep. So here we are on this Monday, and I gotta let the cat out the bag, guys. So. Uh, I was talking to Moons earlier, 
Um, unfortunately, uh, Barbosa, Arnold Barbosa Jr., uh, had to cancel on us today, right, Moons? Yeah, he had to cancel cancel on us. He said he uh, had a situation with his daughter, and he needed to handle that and get a rain check for us. You know? Yeah. Come back on, which is understandable. You know? Yeah, I mean it happens. I mean, yeah, especially it you know, stuff happens especially when you got kids. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, one thousand. So I I totally you know understood. And I was like, you know what, man, we'll just make up a, another date. It'd have been nice to have Mon because four twenty is right around the corner, and I yeah, wanted to hit him sure. up about the you know Ryan Garcia Haney fight. You know he's supposed to. Um, the thing is, is if one of them I think like doesn't make it to the fight, like forever, whatever reason, somebody gets sick, like Garcia or, or Haney. Um, Arnold uh, Barbosa is the next fighter in line to fight that opponent. Hell yeah! So if, if Garcia doesn't show up, then he's going heads up against Haney. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Hell so yeah. I. It would have been dope just to chill, but I mean, again, I don't know. Maybe we can get him a call in. We'll open up the lines a little bit later, Danny, or something. Yeah. Um, what's what type of number? Do you have the number? Yeah, I'll type it in the chat. Okay, we'll pin it, and then uh, if you guys want to call in a little bit later on, uh, but yeah, we hope uh, the best, and you know, uh, his daughter is is doing okay. So. Two nine three four one eight zero, right? Uh, let me double check, man. I think that is it. I'll check my call log right about now. Actually, yep. So nine anyway, five one two nine three four one eight zero. My bad, dog. So we we um <clears throat> shit, man. Well, on that note, we'll, let's get into some block of cheese, man. Over here, man. What's cracking over there in the world, man? Here we go. Well, uh, happy Easter, y'all. We're coming off the Easter weekend. Oh uh, shit, it's yeah. April Fools. How was too? everybody's week? Week? How was everybody's weekend? Uh, it was chill. It was chill, dog. Just kicked it. Rain, so it like, rained. You know? It's yeah. some pozole. <laughs> got down. Oh, you had pozole? I had, yeah. Yeah. had some pozole, dog. She was fire. Man, no, I had man, no. Saturday, or no, Sunday morning, and then we had uh, tortas uh, and for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> you had dinner twice? Ah, I had breakfast at like 8 a.m. Oh, it's fancy. Uh, breakfast menudo and then uh, tortas in the afternoon. Dan Fire. So Danny and I. Down. Now, I was going to say, Danny and I rocked a club, uh, club a party, a, a teen party on Saturday. Uh, is that right? I felt like I was doing Rubidoux High School's prom or something. <laughs> For you know? sure. I already knew what to do. So Shout out to Chuck. It was his birthday. He turned uh, yeah. a big 16, right? Yeah. Uh, 18. 18. I think. No. 16? I don't even know. Damn. See? <laughs> I think it was 16. Yeah. I, I could be wrong. But shout out to Boo Boo and Cat for having us out there. And, you yeah. know, we displayed the music. And it was dope. They had, like, a mechanical bull. Shout out to... Uh, to, uh, is it Lavish? Yeah, my, my Ace, girl? Yeah, Ace, Ace Lavish. Yep. Yeah, Ace Lavish Entertainment. Um, rentals. Rentals, that's what it is. Here Thank you, Crystal, for all your rental needs. They were out there with the mechanical bull. And it, it was dope. I mean, it had rain, but, I mean, they had the whole tent set up. You know, it, it was done right. And yeah. they had the liquor flowing for us in the corner. <laughs> I, saw like I, was a, I saw the like DJ and Don shit. Like, I felt like I was at a club. They, the hospitality was, like, just <laughs> how it should be, you know? But, yeah. like. Shit, dude, they hooked it up with the Happy Dads. They got my boy with the Don Julio. Oh, yeah. You know, like, they had the buckets, the table just for oh, us. You guys, like, you guys were on a good one, man. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was, and it wasn't the regular size Don Julio, bro. Like this was, like, the biggest. Like a Magnum? <laughs> it was a huge fucking bottle, dog. I should have brought that motherfucker put Sheesh. over here. Because we did not finish that at, at, at all. I think I left it, too, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you DJ O, or were you uh, doing some mic Yeah, work? I got on some mic. I DJed a little bit. I opened up for Danny. Hey. Yeah. 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 Let's go. All happy. Look at him. You know, or my stripes, or my stripes. No, nah, because I got on. Because I'll be honest with you, Crystal. I I haven't like been actively DJing for for a while. I mean, I've been busy with the podcast, you know, recording and whatnot. So I haven't been taking many gigs. So when that happens, if you you know, like I know, if you don't keep up with the music side of things, and you know, it's you tend to you tend to fall out of the. You, it's like you gotta keep up with that shit weekly. You know, there's always new music dropping. Yep. So my shit was just, you know, anywhere and everywhere. So I told this fool, you get all the new shit, I'll just spin all the old shit. So it worked out, though. Yeah, it was dope. That's what's up. Teamwork. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, he had all the Mexican music, too. My boy was going, huh? <laughs> 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 all the the, the hobbies. Yeah. That's all Chino they wanted pacas. to hear. Like, literally, like, pegaditas, um, norteñas. You know, so. they're just, they just wanted to dance. I had a mariachi weekend too, Pepe Aguilar at um, Honda Center. Ooh. Okay. The little, <laughs> little pre-show for that. Um, Dope. It was, a, it was a beautiful crowd. People showed up like in Mexican uh, 
what's it called? Like Sharapis? All of that. Like like tucked in and up. shit. Like tucked in and all that. Like the dresses I'm thinking of. I'm, they had the gator boots out or what? Yeah. The they, lizard? They Bo showed buckle? up. Snake, showed out. Snake skin. Hell yeah. Uh, so that was cool. Yeah, I gigged all weekend. Um, even on, on Easter. Shout out to the Fam Bam. Had a beautiful celebration out there in the city of Temecula. Nice, beautiful spread. And uh, yeah, I was DJing um, for the most part. Under a canopy, I hope. Yes, mm. absolutely. Was it indoor or outdoor? It was outdoor. So it, yeah, the whole it, it was raining the whole time, like the whole day, right? Yeah, for sure. We couldn't get a break. Like yeah. my poor mom, we went over to my in laws on Sunday and um, right down the street because we were supposed to do it at the park like everybody else. Mm-hmm. We looked out and the whole park was flooded and we knew it was gonna rain. We thought it was gonna stop like around two o'clock or something like that, but no, yeah. that shit just kept going. So my mom wasn't able to join us because mm-hmm. she lives on the other side of town, and you know, so she was like, "Me, you know, just it's okay, just." I already got to see my grandchildren, you know, earlier in the week. We did like a little pre-Easter thing. So mm-hmm. it was kind of cool. She exchanged, you know, gave them their, their Easter baskets. But uh, fucking rain, dude. I'm over that shit. I I'm know, right? Yeah. With you. Are we in so summer? Last weekend. Last weekend. spring, baby. Tired of the rain. Man, let's get these uh, yeah. shows on the road, baby. Let's get the sunshine out, you know, maybe right. the block out, head out to a remote somewhere. Let's, let's go. go. Let's go. Saturday, food. Hey, food. Shit. Did you talk about, weren't you somewhere at a concert on Saturday? Oh, yeah, Friday. Friday? Friday oh, I, yeah. Uh, that shit looked I, It lit. was all last minute, dog. Uh, I went to the uh, the same game concert at the Toy- Toyota Arena. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, so basically Nick invited me, him and D Dizzle, and then, uh, you know, he had extra tickets or whatever. But when we pulled up, me and my homie Luis, Lil Louie, um, we ran into Lil Easy East people, like uh, – Everybody that basically went to Havasu. So, Shout out to Little Easy E. You know? And then, uh, so, you know, slapped hands, said, well, whoop. Yeah. Walked in with them. So. <laughs> so, y'all had no so, tickets. You just kind of, like, gorilla it? I just basically, like, walked into the back with Easy E's people, and I got the wristband. and <laughs> Get in where you, you know? fit in, homie. <laughs> but obviously, oh, obviously, I was wearing a lot of shade of brown hat. You know, I had to rap. I saw you rapping. I saw you rapping. Rap, so, you know, that, yeah. that was kind of, like, my ticket in as well, because then one of the promoters recognized me. Yeah. And then. Right away, he told the security to give me and Lil Louie the wristbands. and That's the third meter. Let him in. Let him in. You know? That's the third so, That was cool. DJ Quick was there. Rodney O's. Uh, Baby yeah, Bass. Yeah, we saw. All that Baby Bass. All magic. right. Who had the dopest performance of the night? Fuck. I mean. You ain't going to hurt nobody's feeling. <laughs> I mean, we see. I low-key, we see this for all the time because we're on the road with him. But Baby Bass, you know. Yeah. Baby, I'm back. He got here. the most screams? Hey, magic. All the honeys. Um. Shit, dude, everybody else. Was a little rub there? You know who was there, too? Desi Hollow. I saw that food. I said, what's up to him? Yeah, I've been Shout trying to get Desi at Hollow. him. Yo, Desi, get at me, dog. Stop acting like you ain't getting my text messages, bro. Nah, he Come said on, he's man. with it. I told him. I was like, what's up, food? Let's make it happen. He's like, let's do it. Unless he changes his number. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, I ain't going to cool. chase him. But that's Ended dope. Ended up at Punch Bowl after, and, you know, D. Dizzle pulled up. Nick pulled up. Blackie pulled up. Ran into Blackie. Yeah, shout um, out to Blackie. Show. So it was cool. It was Reaver. a good little Friday. It was a good little weekend. I felt pretty, you know. Very, uh, how do I say, like, Popular. very honored, you know, very honored. Because so, I went from watching shows to just kind of just, you know. Sneaking in. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's tight, nah, my it boy's blessed over here. He blessed. It's tight. It was tight. So I got to ask you, when Rodney O, I think I saw a clip when Rodney O was on stage. Did he address the um, future in um, Metro Boomin' song? No. So I was gone by then. Oh, shit. Yeah, I was shit, gone by then because I, I had to go to Punch Bowl. But they showed up, well, not a little late, but. You know, they took their time, but I had to already dip so I couldn't see them. Yeah. So I was like, whatever. I mean, I've seen him perform. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. I just know he's going around. He's claiming that shit, as I would, too. I mean, that song is just the biggest diss song. I mean, we're going to get into it in a little bit here. What, you know. <laughs> I was going to say, what, what, what you mean? What's he claiming? Yeah. Dude, a lot of people da, 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 use that sample, da, 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 da. Dude, all yeah. Metro Boomin did was slow oh, down the tempo. That yeah. One. He, they, like, some, some, some dude did it on DJ. I think it was Beat Source or DJ City, and they showed the screen record of slowing down that song, and it's yeah. the same thing. I'm like, dang. Oh, so what do you mean? Like, so it's like not Metro pull, Boomin's track? So pull it up, pull it up. He just sampled it, and he slowed it down. So but, Metro Boomin sampled Rodney O. Rodney O. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, got you, got you, got you. He just slowed it down. Yeah, because I was like, you know, you could replay that shit nowadays, but that shit sounded to the T like the original, so I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But they swear it's not the so, same. So with that being said, you know that's payday for Ronnie O. Big oh, time. Yeah. We talked about it. I talked yeah. about it earlier this week. And 
he's making some fatty off that shit, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Millions. What? Yeah. yeah even off the Little Wayne track, he made a grip too, dog. And Hell the 21 yeah. Savage as well. Damn. Yeah. If that's the same track, I don't he's know. He's not going to have to do another show ever. <laughs> Good on man. him. Man, shout out to Rodney O. We should get that full call. Yeah. <laughs> should we call him on the fly? Call him up. Call him. Let him see if Put he him on the spot. Connect to the roadcaster. <laughs> hey, give me a big like right now in the super chat. What up? Feed him at tube. Q smooth. Johnny Castillo, Derek Mallory, Mr. Campos, calling Rodney O right now. That's how we do it. That's when you're live. Connect uh, to the broadcaster. Oh, wait, hold on. I thought I was. Hold on. Yo, what's up, ODM? This is Rodney O. <laughs> I thought it was him. What was shit? <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> My dog. Yo, you know, I call you. I, I'm going to pick up because it's all about money. <laughs> Everlasting oh, base. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck it, Rodney. Hold on, I hit the wrong roadcaster. <laughs> there it is. Let me try calling yeah, the CP pickup. Yeah. Watch. You're like what? Let me see. So, all right, guys, if you guys are just coming into the super chat. What up? Yo, Rodney. <laughs> What's happening, man? Yo, check. I can't hear you. Really? I can't hear him. We can Shouldn't hear him. He? Yeah, we can hear him. You can? Yeah. Uh, That's not good. <laughs> oh, shit. Wrong. What's wrong with your shit? Man. Oh, no. We good now, baby boy. What's up, million dollar man? What's cracking with you? You can hear him? <laughs> there you go. What's happening? Yeah, bro? man. So word on the street is, man, you was in the IE and, you know, I saw some clips on from Friday's show and I was like, man, wait a minute. You know damn well. Rodney is making some fucking money right now, boy, off this uh, Metro Booming Future track. Talk about it, boy. Congratulations, first and foremost. Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy, bro. <laughs> I got I gotta ask you: Did, did were you approached at all? But or did they? Did you oh, find yeah, out through yeah, the grapevine? Yeah. Did they ask you permission to use the track? Or yeah, they have to. I own it. Ooh. Right, right, right. He <laughs> so I just thought it was in this. Go ahead. No, I can't nothing move unless I say, even like if for, for commercials or movies, they have to clear it through me because I own the master, bro. Here we go. So did Metro oh. reach out to you himself or was it someone else? No, nah, uh, Epic Records did. Okay. Okay. Yeah, oh, they, they reached out to me, but, but they kind of got me a little bit because they sent it to me, right? And, uh, Kendrick's uh, verse wasn't on there. You know what I mean? Mm. So so I got the call the day before because I know some people that know him. They was like, hey, man, uh, I think Kendrick is on your boy's record. I'm like, I got the record. I don't hear no motherfucking Kendrick. And the <laughs> song was about two minutes and something. You know, these songs. Right, right. So I'm thinking, that's it. I'm like, maybe he on a remix. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Then the shit come out. Not only is he on the motherfucker, he dissing Drake and J. Cole. My phone just goes ballistic. I'm like, hey, man. So right there at that point, you knew this shit was about to take off. <laughs> yeah, man. It was, yeah, it, it went nuts, bro. It went nuts. Man, I've been fucked up ever since. Uh, why is that? What you mean? It's it's just a, it's a lot of business that goes with this shit, bro. It just ain't it just ain't that. Like yeah. I, you know, I got a lot of people that use my shit, and and uh, it's just me and my uh, one of my homegirls that that run run my company. Right. And uh, it's 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 uh it's time consuming, and it's hey man, the, the wolves is out, bro. Yeah. No, I feel you on that, man. And and how does that's got to be though? Like you know, uh, how do I say um, as a blessing, brother, for for everybody to sample. You know, I, cats have sampled my shit, but it's like these like Chicano underground motherfuckers. Like it ain't no fucking you know future fucking you know Metro booming cats. That I, and I know. And now you had Twenty One Savage sampled your shit prior to that his right. Yeah, yeah, and that went gold. So I did good on that too. And NLE Chopper sampled my shit. And he went platinum. And Baby King about to go gold with Damn. my shit. So I, I mean, I got a lot of people that sampled my shit, bro. I like. I mean, it's 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 a business all in itself. What do you think it is about um, them sampling your music specifically? Is it the sound? I think it's the sound you got to remember, man. I was a kid 
when I made them records, man. So being a kid making them records is right for for young for young people. I was a kid when I made that shit when I was like sixteen, bro. Seventeen. Yeah. I remember. So so it still relates to the kids, because I was a kid. So Everlasting Bass dropped what year? Was that eighty seven? Yeah, eighty seven. Eighty seven. And then um but multiple people have used that sample in particular, right? Yeah, I mean, I always, yeah, they have, man, but they would always fuck up the song. The song would sound horrible. <laughs> I, 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 every time somebody used it and they would send it to me, I'm like, well, this is going nowhere. Let me just go ahead and get this little money. Yeah. <laughs> so, so would they try to replay it or do they just straight sample it? They've done both, man. Yeah. It failed miserably with everything. So I look at it like this, bro. I'm not even going to lie to you. I look at it like, Metro Boomin is the the South Dr. Dre man, and mm. he did my shit in his prime. Like his like when uh, Dre did, you know, use Parliament shit and all that. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. But he so, sampled it. Did for the record? Did he sample it? Or did he play it? Because we were going oh, back. He and sampled forth. the dog shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> there it he is. For all the four different formats of everlasting bass from the to the to the horns to the break when Joe's scratching just with the beat hitting boom boom but he used it all bro so so trip on this so i don't know if you saw recently um let's go back to uh, a couple weeks ago at rolling loud when travis scott was on stage with future i think they had they were just about to drop it and uh Travis was about to get off stage, but and let before Metro Boomin was gonna get off stage too, and he was like, "Yo, drop that beat, man, drop that beat." And he's like, "Din and din and din." Have you seen this yeah. video clip at all? Can you bring it yeah, up, man? Yeah, it's I've on the um, IG. What are your thoughts on that? First and foremost, I mean, um, well, there's really nothing to that video. I will say this: what 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 happened was was on Sunday. Oh, hopefully we're still live. The thing's spinning right here. Um, shit. All right, let's let's keep it pushing. Sunday, fast forward. So Drake was seeing. Uh, did you see the video with Drake shooting uh <laughs> shooting fake bullets at fucking Travis Scott's head? Hell no. Nah. <laughs> I'm waiting for Danny to bring this up, man. But uh, I don't know what, what's going on, Danny. Can't be bothered with all that. What, what are your thoughts when you see all this chaos? Because you talked about it earlier. You said about Kendrick dissing them, and then now all of a sudden Drake has just been on this, like, uh, what, what, what did they use earlier? They used that he's been on a, um, it says Drake took an aim at Travis Scott during a performance, symbolically firing shots at a prop representing Travis. This adds Travis to the list of rappers, including Kendrick Lamar, Future, and Metro Boomin, who Drake is seeking revenge against. During Drake and J. Cole's tour, Stop at Penn State University Park, Drake passionately performed Meltdown, his recent collaboration with Travis from the Utopia album. But now it's it's the first video. If you slide over, uh, Danny. Uh, there's the video right there, guys, for those watching. Um, it kind of shows that Dr uh, Travis is showing favoritism towards... Uh, you know, future Metro Boomin. What do you think about that? I'll stop right there. You think that's the case, or you just think he wanted to hear that fucking song because it's a banger? Yeah, he probably just wanted to hear it because it's a banger, man. But if they, they want to beef and there ain't no guns and, and, and motherfuckers getting beat up, man, keep on talking shit, man. <laughs> Bring up the uh, video. It's still, you got to play the Drake one, bro. There's a third slide. Now let's show the one with, with the one I just read about Drake. It's the third third one over. There you go. So here's Drake, and he's rapping his last part of the verse, and he turns around. Travis Scott out there in the crowd, his head. Pop, 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 pop. Oh, that was what you showed earlier. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> this boy had a fucking prop. He had a prop built for just for his tour, because, you know, Drake likes to bring floating props in his tour. I don't know if you've ever been to a Drake show, but and he's got fire coming out of his eyes, out of his head. Travis Scott's head, like, takes over half of the arena. It's insane, but... uh. 
Um, no, I hear you though on that, t- Rodney. Hey, rap beef is okay, but when you start, you know, bringing guns and street into it, bro, I, it ain't hip hop no more. It's something else. Right, right, right. So you know, because I'm be honest with you, bro, I didn't really even know about them beefing, man. I'm living my life. I'm doing my thing. I don't know nothing about what they going through, man. I give a fuck. Rich, rich motherfuckers beefing and and, and all that shit. That shit don't. That shit don't spark my interest. Rich motherfuckers beefing. That's almost as, I'm going to say it's stupid as these fucking NFL players catching cases by fucking doing hit and runs and driving drunk and all this other stupid shit. Doing jail time. Hey, man. That's how it is, man. So I just, man, I stay in my own lane and I just watch and see what's happening and and that's it. I ain't, I, I mean, I. I, I would say before I didn't have a dog in the fight, but now I got a dog in the fight. <laughs> <laughs> Rodney O on the telephone right now. So are you doing any shows for 2024? Because you ain't got to do any no, no more now. No, I'm going to go on tour with, with Quick Man in June in Canada for, for 30 days with a Snoop and Warren G. And then, the, yeah, I'm going to come back, uh, put me and Joe working on a new album. Hey. About four or five songs. Hell in. yeah. So, so we'll see, man. It's fire, too. But we'll see because this is a young man's sport with the new music. But I'm going to test the waters, man. Man, do you, brother. I mean, it's the, the platform's there, the technology's there, and more importantly, you're here. So you got to hey. give, like I always tell Moons, man, you know, we got to give him a little bit of that grain of that saw that, you know, that fire that we brought years ago because our fan base is, is still there. I know yours, you know, hits you up all the time for new music because let's face it, you know, they can't really relate to the some of the newer rap. I mean, cats our age. Yeah, no, I know. I know a lot of cats that listening that was listening to our shit, man, they, they bumping straw day and shit. All <laughs> this, you know, so. That's and right. I ain't mad at them, but you know, you know how it's going then. It's, it's hard to over, it's always hard to overcome your your classic shit, man. So yeah. you know, you're, you're like as good as your last song, song. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you do a new song at a show, I mean they'll listen, you know, they'll bob their head, but they're like, okay, buddy, get back to the shit I like. Right, get shit out of here, you know. So right, we'll right. Bro. Well, I, I could definitely, man, we could definitely use another You Don't Hear Me, though. We could definitely hear, you know, news, need another Everlasting Bass. I mean, the list goes on, brother. You got hits, and you already know that. And that's something that no one can ever take away. Your shit's timeless, man. So, we, you know, we salute I, you, dog. I, I appreciate it, man. I pre- hey, man, from Riverside. Riverside, I eat, baby. <laughs> Woo! Radio. Poly High School. Uh, yeah, man. It's all good. No, I appreciate the call, bro. No, all day. I just we were just talking about it, bro. And I said, let me call, see if he'll pick up. And so I'm glad you did, man. But uh all good, brother. All right, brother. You have a uh, great night, man. Everything cool? Family's cool? Yeah, everything's good, man. Everybody's just looking at me. Everybody watching. <laughs> where, where, where is he at? What's he doing? I'm around. That's right. <laughs> All right, man. You stay up, man. I'm, I'm going to be in touch, bro. You already know, man, in a minute. Peace. Yes, sir. Rodney O, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. hey. That's what first up, guest man. of the night. That's what I know how huh? first guest of the night. Surprise. <laughs> Surprise Sick. Who else you call? Call Dude, someone else. just lagging. <laughs> yeah, so. I, I just probably repost them. He said you need to plug in the Ethernet cable. Yeah, we plugged in all the way live. It's hella lagging. Yeah, it's just lagging, guys. But the audio's good. As long as the audio's good. Yeah. We'll be all right. But it's all right, Daddy Boy. There's nothing we can do if it's out of our hands, man. But uh every time, dog, I was just fucking telling Oscar last night. <laughs> yeah, it's just one I'm of weak. the things. Um, so what else is going on? Uh, happy birthday, MC Hammer. He just Ooh. celebrated his 62nd birthday. Hey. Can't touch that. Oh. Oh. Do you guys know his real name off top, not from looking at the post? That no. I, I posted it, and I don't know it. <laughs> Remember that game we used to play uh, in radio, oh, government names? Uh, I believe so. I believe so. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. Right? I don't. Hell no. What's his name? His government name, Stanley Kirk Burrell. Oh, shit. There it is. Wow. <laughs> Do you look like a Stanley? Oh, no, the Stanley Cup. Nah, he look like a Stanley. <laughs> yeah. He look like a Stanley. There you go. That smile. It's a Stanley smile. Good old MC Hammer, man. That guy been through some shit. I mean, you know, bankruptcy. 
Is that right? That that was the word for a minute. I mean, yeah. Yeah, the dude would bring like a hundred people entourage on you know on tour with them. You yeah. got to pay for everyone. I mean, the promoter's only going to pay for so many cats to you know so many flights, and then you got hotels, and that's why I'd be tripping on like some of these groups that we perform with, like on the cruise ships and the, the bands. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many people in fucking like, you know these, some of these bands? Like fifteen band members, they roll deep. plus ones. <laughs> for real, they roll like posse up. People. Yeah. Yes. And y'all complaining about getting us ocean view on the nah play. <laughs> the sweet. <laughs> nah, but shout out to MC Hammer, bro. Yeah, he he, he you know. They, back in those days they said that he wasn't hip hop. They tried to, you know, uh Too degrade legit. him. They're not degrade him, but just like say, you know, Hammer's not hip hop. You know, he's pop. I think um uh, was it was it Tribe Called Quest back in the day? I think Q-Tip had said something like, "Rap uh, is not pop if you call it that and stop." Or, or some, I don't know if he was referring to Hammer. It's crazy. But I remember when him Sorry. and Vanilla Ice used to get into it back in the day. Who was the number one pop <laughs> rap artist? And Who came out first, Vanilla Ice or MC Hammer? I think it was a Hammer, wasn't it? Uh -huh. Hammer. Let me see. He Tell had Hammer time hammer. though. Let me see. Came out first. Yeah, Hammer Wasn't, Time. Did, Hammer time. Oh. Didn't he sign to Death Row too for a bit? Too? Oh, he did. Wasn't he signed to Death Row too? He was did. He yeah. That was wild yeah, too. He was signed to Death Row. Like, what the fuck, Hammer gonna do on Death Row? It, that, I think that's when he did Too Legit to Quit, right? No, nah, that was that came after, bro. I think. Let me see. Too legit. Too, too legit, legit to quit. quit. Here we go. I got it right here. Look. Let's see. Derek so before I tell us in a second. <laughs> yeah, where's the encyclopedia? Says, Derek. Hamner and Vanilla Ice emerged. Hamner came first with his Rick James sampling track, You Can't Touch yeah. This, becoming an MTV hit and pushing his album, Please Hammer, Don't Hurt Him, <laughs> to an astonishing 21 week reign at the top of the sales chart. Damn. I love that title. Yeah, yeah. So Let's funny. not take that lightly. 21 weeks yeah. as a rapper. I'm, I'm just going to throw that out there. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny as. Both of them have had run-ins with uh, with Death Row. Well, uh, MC Hammer got signed to Death Row, and Vanilla Ice was hung he got out his contract snatched from him and hung out from a balcony. And yeah, uh, Suge Knight. <laughs> yeah, hung his ass over and made him sign. Fool. Well, uh, I think to this day, Vanilla Ice uh, will deny that that really happened. But there's been like oh, there's an interview somewhere where he admits it. Was it? I, I think. Oh, no, you know did. what it was? It's on the MTV interview they did. When they did the yes, uh, not behind the music that was VH1. Uh, MTV did their own like MTV doc. Mm -hmm. and I remember that's where he, he was like, yeah, they hung me out of the window or out of the balcony. So I was like, damn. Gas face for hammer. That's what Derek said. That's a, a third base reference. <laughs> Get the gas face. Uh -huh. So yeah, hammer signed to Death Row. It says here in 1995. It says the funky head hunter hammer. Uh, along with his close friend Tupac. They signed at the same time. Well, wow. we know who made out then. <laughs> For sure. I still can't see Hammer on, on a label like Death Row. But Death Row was popping back in the day, though, you know? Yeah. But he ain't Tupac gangster, has. fool. He barely made the rap fucking label. Yeah. <laughs> he was a entertainer, as they would call the business, him. business, making money. That's right. It's all about numbers at the end of the day. Yep. Hit maker. What else, Craigan? Uh, there's a couple things. R. Kelly's in the news. Lauren London shared something special yesterday for the uh, five-year anniversary of Nipsey Hussle's yeah, passing. It's been five years already? It's been yeah. five That's years. That's what I said. Shit. Yep. So she shared uh, yesterday, Sunday, March 31st, 31 days of holding my breath. This day coincides with Easter Sunday in 2024. How ironic. Given your name, God will rise. Energy is eternal. I love you forever, London wrote. Mm. So, yeah, man. That's deep. Sweet. Deep. Is it Selena's anniversary too? Of her passing? Or something? Yeah. I seen something post about her like on the thirty first. Yep. Was it? Uh, I don't know if it was her passing or if it was her, her uh, birthday's birthday. coming out. Oh birthday. Let me see. Her. All I gotta say is don't waste your time watching that whack ass Yolanda doc. It's fucking trash. Is it? Fucking we knew trash. it would be, but <clears throat> nah, it's like it's, uh, her what, what you thought already being trash, like dump it even worse. Stop it even. Make it lower your standards even lower because that shit was just. That, yeah. Yeah, there it is. Selena you know Quintanilla's husband. I'm going to give her the time of day. Deathversary. 29th anniversary. She yeah. died on the same day as Nipsey? 
Damn, the 31st? That's crazy. Or am I tripping? Nah, she was on the 31st, yeah. That's why. Yeah. 29 years? Damn. That's crazy. I remember like it was yesterday. Sad day. I see her, uh, is that her husband? Her husband was Chris, right? Yeah. yeah the drummer or the guitarist? The guitarist. He's been guitarist. doing a lot of podcasting around interviews and stuff. That'd be kind of cool to get him. Let me call him up. Yeah. Nah, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, shit. <laughs> but, yeah. Super chat. Yeah, who should we call up, man? Yeah, yesterday I seen that uh, Coca-Cola commercial pop up. What that you did with her? Oh, oh is that right? right? Yeah. yeah. Where at? On YouTube? It was on no Instagram. <gasps> Oh, I was yeah. like, because you know, like all the Selena stuff was trending, mm. and then I seen the Coke commercial you did. Huh? That's dope, right? Yeah, Sick that, was dope see that. that was my memory for Yo, sure. Did, what did you shoot it? Like, were you guys together shooting that commercial, or did yeah. you guys shoot it separate days? So I've told the story a few times. Short story: it, We were actually out on the. We didn't record it together. It was different times in the studio, but when we shot the video, it was together. We rode in the elevator together. Me, D W T X, um, Selena, her sister. Sick ass blunt rotation. Yeah, it was dope. Right? <laughs> dope. It was dope. Pass it to the right. <laughs> what y'all talking about? <laughs> Dream blunt rotation right there. Oh, Light shit. Light of Shade of Brown and Selena in the elevator in the 90s. Yeah, that's Bust a hot out. box right there waiting to happen. Hell yeah. That would have been dope. That would have been dope. Shout out to Q Smooth and Super Chat. Appreciate that. Anniversary uh, was yesterday as well. Rest in peace, Nipsey Hustle. Derek. Rest in peace, Alinas. Steven said, a Hammer had an album before, You Can't Touch This, Turn This Mother Out was a song on it. So I'm glad you brought that up, Steve. Um, because, yeah, I remember when Yo! MTV Raps was just popping at the time. And, and before Hammer actually blew, blew up, he had to turn this mother out. My joint was that one, and then let's get it started. That shit was, I mean, it was everything Hammer is, man. It was up-tempo. Up tempo music was huge back then, you know, in in hip hop. So, and your MTV raps banged the shit out of it. <laughs> oh man, it's tight. Take me back. Back to the nineties, real quick. <laughs> man, real quick. yo, if we could bring back anything from the nineties, what would you bring back? Oh. Good question, bro. Like, what would you bring back most? Um, from the nineties, yeah. Fruitopia um. and Surge. Oh, and you even get Surge at Burger King. What? Yeah. They got Surge Burger King just so you know that. Nineties. I don't know. What would I bring? Pagers. Back? Oh, I still Genesis want a pager. Full. Sega Ooh. Genesis. Oh yeah, yeah, I used to have one, but I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Crystal used to have Surge and Utopia. Yep. All I'm right. Th- what about you, Danny boy? So I looked it up. Uh, maybe the uh, the Pogs, those little oh, circle. Yeah. Yeah, those, little, those little egg things, the Yamaguchis or some shit. Yamaguchis. So they have a bunch of stuff right here. Look, so they have like Lisa Frank, the Pogs, the Blockbuster cards. I, don't I used know. to have bring, a Furby. I bring when back I was a Blockbuster, kid. dog. Yo, I remember those Friday nights. Yeah, bring back Blockbuster. Blockbuster. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah, shit, the beeper right there. The beeper. Right there. Look. I think I still need to bring back a VHS from Blockbuster. <laughs> 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 trolls. I I enjoyed the '90s trolls. Yeah, man. Blockbuster was the days, man. Like being able to go with my cousins or my mom, rent a movie. If it was with me and my cousins, Magical. it was a movie and a video game. The Kodak cameras. Okay. Hey, that's what Tommy wants boy bands. <laughs> what, the <laughs> <fuck>? <laughs> what the fuck? No, I, I don't. I want a magic eye. <laughs> no, I don't want any of that. Magic eight balls? Magic eight balls? The, those books, the magic eye books? DB, you didn't answer, did you? Uh, I said the pogos. Oh, those, yeah, the pogos. Those cars. Pogos, right. or, um, I mean, that's like stuff I remember growing up. That. You said pogos. The, po- the little the circle pogs. things, oh, the pogs. Yeah, you call them pogos. Yeah, <laughs> the pogos. Um, like marbles, like just playing with that. Collecting them. I think that was a thing, too, was like collecting them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Collecting yeah. marbles, like with the homies from the apartments. See who had better ones. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, be, you, I'd bring back real MCs. Hey. Uh, yeah. Nah, I'm fucking with you. I'm fucking with you. I'm fucking with you. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> Travis Scott. <laughs> nah, I'm playing with you, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't CGI. know. I just 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 hip hop battles, like yeah. just that 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 whole generation of of hip hop was just so dope, man. It was just battle rap, and you had the conscious rap, you had the boom bap, you had the West Coast. Um, it was just a dope era to be in musically. Do you remember when they used to have the YouTube videos where they were doing the rap battles, and it was like, oh, King of the Dot. Well, that one. And then, but there was, there was the ones where it would turn into fights. 
like somebody would say the wrong shit, and the dude would just get mad and start fighting. I forget what you, it was. It, I think it was on YouTube, or I, no, I used to watch it on World Star. <laughs> That's where I used to watch it. What was yeah, the thing? It was like early two thousands. Well, like late two thousands, like two thousand ten, somewhere around that area. Damn. Yeah. I remember there was a there was a guy on YouTube that used to do it as a prank, uh, spit hot fire or whatever, and then because um, uh, him and Kevin Hart would do it, Man, Chris Rock, they would do those, and then uh, <laughs> then the one you mentioned too. But yeah, I thought that was, I mean I thought those those were pretty dope. Damn. Mm, what else? Nineties. Kind of ciphers. Bring back the water beds, full. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> was it, were they even comfortable, dude? They were cool. I never had one. I, I, Always wanted one with like fish in it. <laughs> Why would you want one with goldfish. fish? With goldfish? Well, how are you gonna see them? <laughs> you have to have a special bed. Make it clear, fool. A lucite bed <laughs> and a clear <laughs> fucking. See, we a girl. Hey, baby, look, goldfish. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Mm. <laughs> That's you, That'd be sick, fool. Some That's ball. You can have gold, gold Player trimming shit. on your bed with goldfish. <laughs> you want to see my aquarium? You trying to mix that fish with the other tuna in the bed? Sick ass fool. Shit, we know what Mr. Zeman was doing back in the day. Sorry, Crystal, no disrespect. <laughs> hey, no offense taken. <laughs> Not Mr. Mr. Seaman. Mr. Seaman vibes. Whoa, whoa. What's going on between them sheets? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on inside the water bed? A whole lot of swimming. <laughs> a whole lot of swimming. Money, moon, swimming, and women. Uh, <laughs> quit <Yeah>. playing. <laughs> Chill. Next Got single wild. out, Got water wild. bed. Wild. What Just else popping? What else popping? Well, today's April Fools. Did you guys see any like actual good pranks? Yes. What? There was uh, Eminem. He faked the whole world like he was dropping an album today. Mm-hmm. And his fans were pissed. Were they? Of course they were. He hasn't had an album in four years? I don't even know. Since Kamikaze? I mean, I don't know if people yeah. are waiting on it, like checking for Eminem like that nowadays. But um it says, uh, many stands of Eminem feeling after M dropped the bomb. He <laughs> They said stands. I like that reference. That his new album was just an April Fool's prank. M hyped it up with a video from an old project saying the next studio album is like going back to the roots. It was infinite. But now it's more infinite out today. And then, um, yeah, so I don't know. He was kind of upset. I think we have the little trailer you could play. Did he have volume to that? I wouldn't play it. You want me to play it? Does it have music? Let me see. Drop the album, Grandpa. That's what they said. Yeah. <laughs> it's like some music. Well, it, right it has that song. I don't know. Oh, it has a song on it? Yeah. The, I'm some city. I'm so, no. Here yeah, we are showing I, I Wikipedia, I doing all this. and. That's crazy. Go watch it. It's on the Blackout Instagram. It's very like meme culture. Yeah. Yeah. AI Eminem. That's crazy. Like that shit just looks fake. I mean. The way it's done. <laughs> it was really cheesy. The way it sounds. Me and Crystal were listening to it earlier. That shit sounded cheesy. The announcer dude on it. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Like it was it was kind of corny. So like from, the you, whole April from you hearing it, you, the moment you hear it, you're like, oh, yes, this is not real. I think it's just trying too hard to appeal to the younger audience by making it all memory, you mm-hmm. know? Like, Ice Spice dropped that, uh, thank you, the shit. <laughs> and it's like, she she went very meme with that. Like, yeah. she kind of turned it down to a meme. And I think that that worked. But this looks like it's trying to copy that or like, you know, I don't know. It just, it looks very forced, even as a fucking April Fool's joke to me. At least. Right. Like, they just did it all fast. Yeah, or just like, I don't know, just, just unscripted or just seems cooked and corny, cooked and corny. There it is. What else? What other pranks are going around? I saw Oreo do a prank, but it was like they're separating the, the cookie from the cream. They're like breaking up and shit. But, that oh, you know, even that, like, I don't know. <laughs> do I, I'm do we, sorry, but I broke up with the chocolate a long time ago. I go for the feeling, homie. You're not in love with the, the cookie. I go for the creamy mommy. Oh. Hey, cream always rises to the top, baby. Hell yeah. <laughs> She's on it. Let's go. You know, but I don't oh, know. Shit. I don't know. I didn't see any like personal ones. I just seen like these corporate fucking uh, attempts at April Fool's jokes. And I don't know. I wasn't feeling it. Yeah, it's kind of cheesy too, huh? This shit just seems like it was just straight up all cheesy. Everybody's Everything's all, all the pranks are played out, right? The yeah. toothpaste, the uh, fucking Oreos. The I'm pregnant. The I'm pregnant. Yeah. That's the most played out one right now. That one is, yeah. I'm pregnant. Yeah, are you? Yeah, okay. Show me the test. I think I've seen that a couple times actually today. Yeah, me too. 
Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Stephen. Stephen Otero. For real or not? Huh? Let's create a game where people guess how many words Money Moons is saying in each episode. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> they coming for my boy. You say these nuts, boy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's three for you right there. That's, That's three four words. words for your ass. Four where you go. You go four. <laughs> it's not the only thing that rises to the top. Ooh. <laughs> these nuts. <laughs> Spence us, Stephen Battle. You asked for it. <laughs> You're going to get it. In some fun. This seems like it should have been an April Fool's prank but in some fuck around news that 7-eleven hot dog seltzer what's oh, yeah, up yeah. with it what the fuck that's real right you should have bought some and tried them yeah the glizzy water yeah the glizzy water, water. i've seen your comment that this the what one you're gonna show it to you right now yeah. not drinking that. so 7-eleven dropped the crazy drink with a miracle seltzer it's called big bite hot dog sparkling water mm-hmm. that sounds like a prank in itself i'm saying but it's not it's real I've that, heard of this company, real. Miracle Seltzer, and I've been wanting to try <laughs> I want that it, shit. I want it. But right. now <laughs> this, they have this, and it's like that's so funny because that was that, <laughs> that was a Limp Bizkit joke. <laughs> they came out with the with the album called um, Chocolate Starfish and the Hot Dog Flavored Water. There it fucking goes. Man. Wow. IRL shit. Do you think that's where they got it from? I mean, I can't help but uh, say yes. <laughs> I know the the owners of the brand. They're like, yeah, they're white, so yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's direct inspiration, but maybe I'm wrong. Either way, I'm curious. I wouldn't drink the whole thing, but I would take a sip. You take a big bite. <laughs> take a little bite. Don't Try come from. <laughs> what? The what glizzy is Glizzy water? Moons? Glizzy is like hot dogs. The like, hot dogs are selling. Yeah. Yeah. That's what the cool glizzy. kids call hot dogs. All right, I learn something new every day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting when I saw that too. <laughs> That's why, that's why they call Tommy the Glizzy Gobbler. Wow. <laughs> 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 uh, not the Glizzy. They don't call me that. Don't call me that. They don't call me that. Hey, chill, dog. It's the homie. Chill. No, 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 no. That's oh, my me. gosh. Chill, dude. We should have had some here to try. It's the homie. Now. <laughs> like when we tried the black soda? Yeah, exactly. And black turned your soda. mouth purple? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. The mystery flavor. Next week, we're having Glizzy Water. <laughs> Brought Tommy. to you by your super chats and donations. Let's keep. <laughs> Man, we're stuck like Chuck right now, huh? I'm looking at my the stream. Even Just like a late the lag. A late the lag. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a late the lag. A late the lag. <laughs> what else popping? Um, should we speak on it, R. Kelly? Yeah, for Bro, sure. What happened? What did he do this time? R. Kelly <laughs> speaks on Diddy's situation oh, from prison. He's trying he to say? speak behind the walls? <laughs> yeah. Um, recently dropped his take on Diddy's latest drama and straight up ain't buying any of it. He was like, yo, this mess is wild. People out here cracking jokes and acting all clueless on the airwaves and socials, but they ain't safe either. Kelly kept it real. That's the messed up part. Folks too blind to peep the game being played. Damn, he he keeps going. Should I just keep reading? Yeah, (laughs) for sure. This is his quote. That's why I ain't trusting none of this noise. They could talk about Diddy. They could talk about anyone, but I'm seeing through it. They could say it's sunny outside. I ain't taking their word for it. I'm in the mix now. I see how they move. Okay, who is they? Who the fuck is he talking about? You know who they're talking about. They. Oh, the higher ups? Yeah. The, the elite. The Illuminati. Mm-hmm. The elite. Chill, dig. They're going to come for us. Oh, shit. My bad. Nah, they ain't worried about us. I want to know who got this statement from him in prison. Right? Yo, <laughs> R. Kelly, you got something to say? Yeah. Or, like, Call me, dog. Call me, collect. <laughs> but, you know. Hey, people out here cracking jokes, man. <laughs> like you ain't safe, but they ain't safe either. Like who is he referring to? Like who's not safe? Like us as a general population, or yeah. or artists or other celebs? All the above. Look, of course you're not safe if you're freaking harboring fucking kids in your home. If you're guilty, you're not safe. Internet of kids of you know porn on your laptops. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, no one's safe. They will come for you. I mean, and I say that because, you know. But I think he's trying to, like, play into, you know, feigning his innocence still. Because he's saying, like, yeah, they could talk about Diddy. No matter the the fucking proof that's already been spread out throughout the years. But he's like, it could happen to him. It could happen to a motherfucker like himself, R. Kelly. Because he's he's still denying all the allegations, right? Like, I didn't do it, man. Like, he's he's trying to do it. it. He, yeah, he's still beating her on the bush. He'd be like, oh, uh, what do you mean by teenage? You know, like he's not he's not copying to it fully. So I think it's just a way for him to be like, 
you know, I don't give a fuck what y'all say. You can say, you can make up shit about Diddy, me, or anybody could get caught up in it. All right, check it out. Who's bumping R. Kelly in 2024? Moons? No. You know what? I Crystal? Just bumped, I just bumped him. I, I don't bump him personally, but professionally, people want to hear R. Kelly yeah. still for a fucking fact. I believe I retweet that. Which <laughs> one? Uh, which one? Uh, one, two step. Did, did you play step it personally or you DJ? Step in the name of love. You DJed it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well that, so, that doesn't count. It was a corporate. It was a corporate. But as far yeah. as the club, I mean, I played it at Punchbowl too. So. Yeah. That's like club. No one's ever right? come up to you be like, yo, take that shit off. No, they, I'm uh, telling you, they request it. I don't even know the last time I heard R. Kelly was. <sighs> See, I just have this thing where people, if you're really like, okay, you're against this dude because of what he has done, allegedly, uh, you're going to just say, fuck his music, too. Like, I just hate him as a, you know, he's disgusting as a person. I'm not going to support anything. And then there's like, all right, there's people that will separate that. that. He is who he is, a dumb motherfucker, you know, whatever. Like, but his music still slaps. I, you know. But then it's hard to listen to his music <laughs> knowing no, the story, you know. <laughs> that, yeah. There's that, too. Kind of ruins it. Um, Just just know everybody's out here doing something crazy. Uh whether they're artists or not. Right. Mm. Well, not everybody yet. Tommy's out here getting buck wild. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? So, so if Diddy, Diddy gets arrested and he goes to jail like this man, are you stop playing Diddy? No, I've already said this. I don't count uh, people I mean, like that. Yeah. Same thing, you know, his, their songs are like club anthems. So you can't go without playing them. You got to play them. Yeah. I, I feel believe. like Diddy don't even got songs, though. He just produces. He's just like the executive producer. Well, he's on it. He's on some. He's yeah. got the throwback Diddy, slappers, dog. though. Yeah. He's got the, the 6 p.m. set. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. 6 to 8, the warm-up or, crowd. Or brunch. Or, or brunch. Brunch. Or brunch. Or brunch. Brunch jammers. You know, if you're not playing his music, you're definitely playing one of his artists. Yeah. Yep. Biggie, and they're up. And they're shouting him out? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mace. Total. Lil' Kim be shouting him out? Faith Evans. I think that's one why people... Diddy's tracks. I was going to say, I think that's why people think he's got a lot of tracks, because he's like... He was like Shug. He, well, not like Shug, but he was like on every track, basically. You know. Yep. That's why Shug came out of the way yeah. he did. Shout out to everybody in the Super Chat. If you're just pulling up right now, yeah, it is glitchy. It's just the internet, man. But if the audio sounds cool, that that's what matters to us anyway. But uh, hopefully it'll smooth out here. Uh, Q Smooth says, I'm not bumping P. Diddy. I despise him now. See? And you got cats like Q Smooth. And I respect that, too. Yeah. Um, but guilty until proven, uh, innocent. Is that how it goes? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was funny guilty or something. Didn't Jay-Z have a song? Or innocent until <laughs> proven guilty. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. One of those. <laughs> That's all cerrado. No, I'm just nah. <laughs> you guys heard about the, uh, High Heart Music Awards? That's tonight, right? Yeah. I saw Ice I Spice like, won an award. I don't know. I was trying to catch up, I but Ice Spice. it's just a lot. Ooh. Godzilla and Kong did very well this week. Yeah, it, talk it, about it. Came it. out this weekend. I haven't watched it yet. I'm going to watch it tomorrow morning. We're going to do a review uh, on it from the next episode that we record. Yeah. So that episode will drop next Thursday. We'll do the full review for Godzilla Kong. But so far, I mean, I was already excited. I always get excited for these type of movies because, I mean, you know, it's it's Godzilla. Oh, it's legendary, yeah. bro. Your yeah. your son, your daughter, or even yourself. You're either Godzilla or Team Kong. <laughs> yeah. You know, and for me, it's I'm King, I'm Team Kong in this one. You know, but this one it's not really like it's one versus the other. It's them working together, so it's really interesting how they're how they're gonna how they went about it, and it's done very well not only in the box office but review wise. It got a ninety percent, I believe, on on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, so that's pretty good. Uh, well, really good. Uh, but uh, yeah, this one's pretty good. I mean, I can't wait for it. Like I said, one of my favorite scenes in the trailer that I see is Kong jumping on Godzilla's back. <laughs> uh, that's that's pretty cool because I'm like yo so what the fuck's about to happen as soon as that because Kong jumping on Godzilla's back Godzilla about to get choked the fuck out <laughs> nah they about to jump the shit out of somebody because this one they're supposed to be fighting against uh, oh they're they're joining up with each yeah, other yeah they're joining oh, okay. up uh, together to fight against two others uh, the one is for sure that's the one you see in the trailer uh, Scar King the yeah. other one is rumored to be Shimu but it's not 100% confirmed obviously until you watch the movie to see Shimu is like what kind the, of creature is that? She's she is like another version of of Godzilla, basically. But oh. in the lore of that comic book and and the lore of that storyline, she's like the original like version of Godzilla. Oh, she's like the first go. Titan Mother. type thing. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. Okay, wait. Call me ignorant, but what is Godzilla? Is he a dinosaur? Is he a dragon? You know, it's funny. Dragon. I've never actually. I think he's more dragon like. I, I want to say he's more dragon like, but I'm not cool. sure. I've actually never yes. looked that Godzilla. up. It's interesting. I've never actually thought about looking that up either. <laughs> so, like, you saying that right now, I'm like, shit, that's a good question that I don't know, don't know the answer to. Mm. I think he's a hybrid. No, the dragon Might monster. It might be, but what? But what's different is about this one is because uh, one of the things they brought up is how in this one his color changes because in the last one he was like a bluish white. Mm -hmm. This one is a pinkish white, you know, um, and that's because from what they released so far, it's just because you know wherever he was hibernating, it was near mm -hmm. close to some new power source for him. So there you go, you got yourself a yeah. uh, medium rare fucking Godzilla. Yeah, <laughs> and supposedly Kong is supposed to be like ten times more powerful than Sorry, he was in the last one. You know, what does it say right there for Godzilla? Godzilla's prehistoric reptilian monster uh, awakened and empowered after millions of years. Uh, yeah. So is it dinosaur? Prehistoric yeah, basically. Dinosaur. So it's basically the same as a dinosaur. But yeah. it says Lucky Dragon. I don't know. What does it say? Oh, yeah. Lucky Dragon 5 is a... Oh, so with the nuclear bombing to Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the Lucky Dragon 5 incident, still fresh from Japanese conscious, Godzilla was conceived in the metaphor of nuclear weapons. Uh... That makes sense because that's usually that's like his power source, you know. For Godzilla, uh, they showed that in the last movie. They showed it in the first movie, you know, uh, that they did with uh, where it was just Godzilla. They focused heavily on that, and then on the TV show, the Apple TV has the TV show version of it where it's uh, it focuses more on the human storyline. Mm. Uh, it's called Monarch. Pretty dope. If you want to check it out? Yeah, uh, it's pretty dope, Sean. Definitely. They they show Godzilla in there as well. Yeah, well, go go check out the movie. It's obviously a banger. Eighty million dollars in its debut weekend and climbing. So I definitely want to take my son Elijah to go check that out. Uh, spring break is on, so we'll maybe we we'll go. You know, go do that. And, and I'm Tim King Kong all the way for sure. Are or is you? it Kong? Yeah. What about you, Moon? Who are you, Godzilla or Kong? Who you got? Why they drop the King anyway? I'm gonna go with King Kong, dog. Well, because <laughs> technically they haven't established him as King Kong. That's part of what this movie is gonna do. Oh, I got it's going you. To establish his character as as King Kong, and where exactly he's gonna be king of, we find out in the movie. I'm so <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm for that Zilla, baby. Oh, yeah. you Zilla. Okay. I'm Zilla. Did you watch Godzilla Zilla. minus one? How, what, what, what? Did you watch that movie Godzilla minus one? Minus one? Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a. I've Jap only seen the first one. It's another Japanese Godzilla movie. Check it. I out. haven't seen any of the foreign. No, know. check out the, that one Godzilla minus one. I think you'll like it. Yeah. It, w it won best visual effects at the Oscars this year. Let's fucking go. What's that that fucking arm strap that Khan's got on his fucking arm? So that's gonna be they're calling it the gauntlet right now, but that's gonna be as the a result gauntlet. of uh, of like the. Whatever battle he gets into early in the movie, he becomes severely injured, and that gauntlet is what they put over his arm to help him uh, basically become more become stronger. Sick. It's a piece of art from it's a piece of technology from one of the monsters they fought in the last uh, Godzilla movie, where both of them fought together against that monster. So they took that and they basically reformatted it to fit Kong and make him stronger and more powerful. So. Right on. Movies y mas. Check, Check them out, out this Thursday, 8 p.m. right here on the Blocked Out Podcast channel. What's, what's cracking in? What's cracking in in the excavator? <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> hey, my son be on that shit, bro. Like, what is that? What is it's that? It's blippy. But, like, there's a song he sings. It's called the excavator <laughs> song. Bro, he like, says, what's cracking? It's the excavator. It's a song. He's he does not it. say what's crapping. No, no, I said that. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that foot just got me. Like, Blippy? He, dude, he watches that every that single day with his grandpa, with his tata. And, like, <laughs> hey, he wakes up, tata, Blippy. Like, tsh, bro. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're in the, you hear the living room. In an excavator. <laughs> The and they're just chilling, dude, watching that shit. It's funny. If you know, you know. <laughs> Shout outs to Marcus Hernandez for subscribing to the channel. We appreciate you, brother. Just want to give you uh, some light on that. Um, <laughs> Steven says, it seems like the scheduled guest pulled an April Fool's joke on ODN. We were just saying that, too. Right? I don't know. Well, he's still. I'm still waiting for the joke to fucking <laughs> knock on the door. because. So far, we're already an hour and 15 minutes in it <laughs> <laughs> and no Barbosa. So, no, nah, he's, you know, he's dealing with his daughter right now. So we hope the best for him. Um, let's see here. Q smooth. And I believe Puffy has something to do with Pox passing away. Uh, mm. well, they're yeah, saying I believe that. so. That was Allegedly. I think the CIA has something to do with that, too. But, you know, what do I know? <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> Let's see what else we got here. We're dipping into your Rolodex, I thought. Who else are we calling? Uh, who you want to call? Let me see. Call Bass. I'm <laughs> 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 It's the much, you remember me? <laughs> <laughs> I emailed you the footage. Uh, <laughs> chill, 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 chill. Super chat. Who should we call? <laughs> Type it in the day. super chat. That's yeah. Up, They're going to tell you MC Magic. That's fucked up. Call be real. Have him be. Should I call royalty? Nah, royalty be on the phone. Uh, Take my. <laughs> hey, yo, yo, it's here. royal. <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah, call him and ask him about that, that beat. I call own Hater World. Hey, hey call, call Mark Menezes hey, and, and lock in that date for the rat hole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the rat hole. And the, lunch? The um the vinyl store. Yeah. I'm trying to go check out some vinyl yeah. and eat some pizza. He just did a little shout outs to Mark from Riverside. If you're not following him on Instagram, he was just at that rat hole. It's a record store. That's not what you think. <laughs> Dirty asses. <laughs> <laughs> nah, if they know, they know. Let's go to the rat hole. I have to go by myself if we don't go. I'm <laughs> saying. Been waiting. I'll I live, call you up. I live right there too. I'll fucking There's meet road. you there. Maybe I'm Magnolia. Is that Magnolia? Yeah. 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 Okay, let's go to let's go to Baker's after that. Uh, go to Ross after. No, that. we just go to Johnny's. <laughs> go to Savers. Mm. Go to Johnny's. Johnny I, Burger. I'll call Bash. Let me see. Hello, what's cracking? What's up, nephew? If you call Bash, I'm gonna hit the pin. <laughs> Hang on, I don't even know this is his number. <laughs> I think I'm calling Baby Bash. Turn me up. If you feel you've received this message, oh shit, error, <laughs> it ain't that one. <laughs> Let me see. Just Trap California phone. phone. <laughs> when he's in Cali. All right, let's try this one. Oh, shit. <laughs> Damn, I think he Damn. broke up with you, all. I think he blocked me, fool. <laughs> one more time. Your call has been forwarded to voice. Ah, oh, he straight hit. Trying to reach is not available. Well, maybe he has it on Do Not Disturb. I was going to say. Yeah, call possibly. D&D &D boys. Like that? Yep. Let me see. There you go. Ah. Damn, What's fool? up, the smoking nephew? You're like, you're... Hard to reach, dog. That's <sighs> so what happens when you don't have a guest. You got a call. Yo. There What's is. up, nephew? What's up with your boy? We just right here, man, live on the Blackout Podcast. I was like, we just calling. We we, we hitting the roll of decks. I said, Bass was. Oh, uh, man, you, you crank calling motherfuckers. <laughs> Come on, doggy. <laughs> <laughs> that, mother that motherfucker still crank calling, man, like he's 15, man. <laughs> Yo, man, did you order pizza? Somebody order pizza there? Hey, is your refrigerator running? Is your refrigerator running? <laughs> go you catch it, go catch it. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, man? I heard you was in town Friday, man, here in the IE. Uh, I was in, uh, where the fuck was that? I? I was Ontario. In Ontario. Yeah, you, weren't you there? Nah, bro. Did I, I was, see you there? I was, where every, I see you at? Everybody and their mama was there. I was the only artist that wasn't either invited or we weren't on the bill. We was watching from the sidelines. Um, we was in I, Havasu, I just, bro. That's right, Lake Havasu. That's right. That's, that was the week before. Yeah, yeah. You was in and out of that motherfucker. Like, I think you had to catch man. a flight or something, man. Yeah, I drove back to Vegas. Takes like two hours. That's wild. You so drove yeah, that's back to. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. And you had to catch a flight the yeah, next yeah. morning, right? Yeah, because my son had a soccer game, man. So I, I'm, I'll be coaching. So I man, to get there shout out to Bash, so, man. See, it's how true. You do, uh, you coach like the li the leagues, like the Sunday league teams, or no? It's weekends. It's it's, it's Saturday tournaments. It's uh, uh, my, my son Julian. He's he's nine years old. So yeah, he he really wants me uh to keep him in the league. So I'm I'm always I got Brando and I got Presley. They play sports too, but uh, Julian, I, I get to coach the team a little bit. All right, I got a question. Number one, how the hell <laughs> do you? juggle that and find time to coach and then be on tour with it well luckily i get the weekdays off right so i can do whatever i want on weekdays yeah. right so I, I practice all that good shit you know what i'm saying training mm. and then it's the weekends i gotta figure out my flight so i check the schedule of the soccer game okay well usually the games are in the morning so you know i can either get a late flight when it's saturday night or if it's a friday night show i gotta catch the red eye or something hella early to get back home so it's yeah. always Juggling, I'm, I mean, I've missed some games. I haven't missed some games because right. of shows, but I try not to. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say because uh, I mean, my son plays ball, and I don't coach. But even you know, our our shows be on the weekends, and so do his games. And I'm like, 
if I'm here, I'm I'm there. But if I'm not, then I, I got to go. But coaching is a, another level. You know what I'm saying? Like shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I have to be there. Yeah, to encourage. And, and it's different when you had when I didn't have kids. Shit, I stayed at the show. I stayed about three or four days extra at hey, whoever I was at. You know what I'm saying? Getting that work in. Yeah. Now let me ask you this: How does your son feel about you coaching? Because I know my son, he just doesn't pay no tell. I'm just dad on the field. You feel me? Yeah, he, he, yeah, but he listens to me. I, I got a nice little rapport with my son, so he knows when I, you know all I got to do is just, he knows the tone of voice when I'm serious. Right, right. Do you stress so that he, to him? Like on the field, I'm I'm coach. I'm not. I'm I'm not. Yeah, I'm yeah. not your dad. I'm your dad, but you know here is you'll get it like anybody yeah. else. And just like and just like uh, a lot of a lot of fathers that are coaches, I kind of tend to go a little harder on him, and I try to control that. You know, because sometimes. It's not a good look. Yeah. But since he's my son, I might just go a little bit harder on him just to prove that he's not my – I mean, he is my favorite, but just to prove I'm not playing no favoritism on the, on the field. You feel me? You ever bench him? Oh, of course. <laughs> I'll bench, if, you, if you fuck, I'll bench my mom. <laughs> I'll bench anybody if they're messing up. Man, I gotta, I'll got to. call it how I see it, man. Sit the pine. Yeah, man. This is your first time coaching or, or, or like? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I helped out for years with my son, Brando, and, and yeah, my daughter, my daughter, Prez. So, so it's, it's, you know, I was an athlete myself, so it's, it's just natural. Yeah, I know. I see you getting in on the basketball game. We played a couple times back in the day at the 99-1, boy. Hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, St. Ice scored 30. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right, man. Especially at our age, we gotta we, we gotta somehow get out there and just get on the field, pick up a basketball, or do something, bro. Cause shit. yeah, yeah, my kid and, and me having kids at such an older age, my kids are young, so they keep me young. You feel me? Yeah. Some guys have kids older, and then by the time they're fucking, the kids are in the twenty five, twenty six years old. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. You ain't got really nothing to do. Mm. You ain't you ain't playing ball or catch or you know what I mean. You ain't doing nothing with them really. It's that good weed too. Hell yeah! Oh man, yeah, yeah. Well, they ain't on that. They ain't on that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah, being yeah. on that. <laughs> just being on that. What's cracking with the uh, what? What? What else you got planned right now, man? You in the studio? You, you know, you touring? You working on some projects? Man, I go to the studio on Tuesdays only, buddy. I'm not really. I don't like to go to the studio, but I got a set date that I know I have to go. So Tuesday, every Tuesday, I go to the studio. My shows are booked till now, till fucking eternity. To 2028, mm -hmm. I've been booked. You know, you know, my schedule is crazy. Mm -hmm. And then just working on, on the soldies, you know what I'm saying? Writing, working on the bash tones, uh, working with little Mia May, working with different artists. You know, I'm really on that soldie tip right now. So mm. I've been blessed to be a deep pioneer in the game. So it's pretty dope. Is Bash, Baby Bash, signing artists right now in 2024? Or are you just kind of working with what you got? No, just what I got. I don't want to sign no artists. You know what I mean? I got some singers. I don't really want to sign no rappers because it's just a, you know what I mean? I don't want to yeah. try to hold nobody back. You feel me? I don't, you know, I just rather write because I like to write songs. So I write songs for singers. And when it, when I do sign them, it's like I produce and write the songs, you know? Well, I'm glad you said that, Bass, because we know that me and Money Moons and Havasu, we was like, man, let me shoot Baby Bass this beat real quick. Uh, turn this one yeah. up. Man, have you got a chance to sit with that? We trying to get Baby Bash on this track, this lot of shade of yeah, brown. I like it. I like it. I like uh. it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, uh. hey. Okay, yeah, I know how it goes. You fuck yeah. around, ride a hook on the spot, boy. Yeah. Hey, look at that shit. Bash should have that shit done in 10 minutes. Uh. Oh, yeah. It's some laid back shit. Oh, I, we, yeah, we, yeah. All I, got, all I got to do is smoke a joint, get in there. It'll take me about 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people don't know, bro. Yeah. That's what you're known for, bro, is is I know writing hooks, right? Yeah, that's what got me my gig. That's what got me my career. You know, that's what got me signed with Clive. I was in a in a room with Clive Davis. Yeah. Not in a room in his office. In his office. So, so, no diddy. I, I was in, in his <laughs> office. I was, in, I was in Clive Davis's office. Get, uh, he wanted to meet me because I wrote Check. a song with for Paula, for Paula Diana called "Doing Too Much." Okay, yeah. And he wanted to sign writers, and he had uh, me, Michael Williams, and a couple other executives in the room. He started playing me music and asked me what what would I write to that. And I started just coming with hooks from the top of my head, and he goes, "Okay, well, who's your lawyer? Because our lawyer's got to talk to somebody to sign you." And that's how quick that was. Man, that was all she was wrote. All about the hook. After that, bang after banger, man.
yeah, the hooks are the hardest part to me. The raft, you know, that's easy. Hey, what was it you used to do? Uh, didn't you used to do something on Instagram where you discovered artists? Didn't you discover me and May on, on your? Uh, we used to have yeah. a weekly thing, right? Well, former winners, yeah. I have four, the former winners of Talent Tuesday, and they all won money off me. Talent Tuesday was me and May, Coda the Barber, and J Rocks. J Rocks was with Empty Magic. They, okay. They before they before before they started coming up, they all won Talent Tuesday on my Instagram. What what happened with the J Rock? That was just something you just said. Here, Mad, you can just take her, or you just let her go. No, I, no, I didn't sign her. I wasn't signing nobody. I was just give, I was just giving the money away. Oh, they I got won. you. So, so, I, so somehow they connected. I mean, we were gonna do something. It's just like I said, I got too much shit on my plate. So it was great that MC Magic did anyway because she's falling up, and you know, it is what it is. That's 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 great that he was there for her. Me and May were you know we're doing her codas with Danny Trejo. So yeah. I'm not really tripping off signing people. I like to help people blow up, you know? I saw this. Uh, well, you, when you sign people, dog, it's a headache, bro. Believe me. All these motherfucking signing artists, don't believe, there's a headache behind the scenes. You know what? Them. Somebody told me that. They said, because I was getting into signing acts, and they were like, bro, don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it. And I was Good like, luck. why? I was Good like, luck, buddy. Because, <laughs> you, you know, you got to deal with all the headaches, man. Yeah, man, massive. Um, and, I saw, and, 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 and it's other people that get, you know, it's just, you know, it's just how it is. It's typical, you know, hey, 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 they calling you back, they're holding you back. Motherfucker, hey, I ain't no one holding nobody back. You think I'm going to hold you back? I'm putting all this money invested in you. I want my shit back. I want my money back. I yeah. Why the fuck would I hold you back? Fuck around. Who was it that told me the other day? They said, man, this, 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 this dude that I know, he invested in this artist, went to go shoot their first video. They didn't even end up showing up. And homeboy lost like fifteen hundred. <laughs> oh, man. I got, I got, I got, I got a lot of sad stories that people have <laughs> went through. <laughs> Man. Hey, Bash. Pass, pass that shit, homie. Pass, pass that homie. shit, homie. Damn. Why you bullshit? That's just. Damn. I don't think I ever hear you cough like that, bro. Get my boy water bottle. Man, she went down on the, it went down the wrong pipe. Wrong the pipa. Oh, man. Hey, so you, you, you're you known for posting. I love following your shit, man, because you, you always say with your chest out, man, you're not afraid to. There's no filter when it comes to your IG posting. So your light, latest one is that April Fool's Day is canceled this year because no, no made-up prank could match the unbelievable shit going on in this world right now. Dude, the, How the true fucking, is that? The whole fucking the world, going, the whole world's a prank. Everything's a prank. It's crazy, so, isn't it? I don't, I don't need, I don't, yeah. Nowadays, you don't know what to believe, who to believe. It's all fake. It could be, motherfucker can make up a whole article and make it look so real that half the country will believe it. The other half will be child skeptical, but they'll be called haters. You know how it hey, is. Hey, AI running that shit weird, now, though. Bash. AI running that shit now. Music, graphics, <laughs> videos. Like, man, there ain't a fucking AI app that's not out there that's just not taking somebody's job. That's why I don't try to, like, I'm not trying to blow up. I'm not trying to be famous. I'm not trying to be relevant. All You know what I mean? I, I say it all the time. It's like, I don't want to do that. They made my day. I don't want to leave that to the younger, the next generation. Yeah. Well, folks like, man, you should do this. Do this. Man, I ain't doing none of that shit, bro. I ain't going to, I don't need interviews. I don't need none of that shit, man. I just, my, I got my following. My follow, if, if you follow me, you see my followers, my listeners. are just solid every fucking month, every year, so. I'm I'm happy with my piece of the pie. I don't want more. I don't want to. I don't want any more. That's I'm right. You you're comfortable? Did you ever uh, f f think you ever stop touring? When do you think you'll stop touring? And hang it up. Man, I've been watching Stevie Stevie B been touring so long, dog. I'm going. I'm going just as long as Stevie B goes, bro. Wow. I love Stevie. He got to hit the gym though, bro. <laughs> he got to hit he the does? gym. Oh, I, seen him. I, uh, I got a show with him in Dallas coming up, but but I love his music. So yeah, and it's always. It's always good to see like uh, that whole freestyle scene when I see him all perform. I'm like, man, I'm gonna keep performing. I'm just gonna keep performing until you know, I can't because the only reason why some people don't perform is because they get on drugs or their personal life right. or they're all crazy, motherfucker. You know what I mean? Otherwise, if you stay healthy and take care of yourself, you could tour to your fucking a hundred. You know, we lost a lot of cats, bro. I mean, touring with like groups like Tierra and Malo, and I see a lot of the homies. You know, Rudy. You know what I'm saying? And his brother. Yeah, uh, brothers, yeah. And we've done so many shows with them, and it's like. They're not here no more. And it's like, uh, no. we're like, we're, they call us the last of the dying breed. You know what I mean? I'm like, what is it? Somebody said that on, on our heads. And they were like, you know, that's why you get in book. I said, no, I thought my music was pretty good. And actually, <laughs> but uh, no. Nah, well, your I, catalog is great. Your catalog is great, but you have to stay healthy. That way we can keep it going. Yeah. Know? And, you know, yeah, it's the Sierra, El Chicano, uh, 
all the old school groups, yeah, I mean, they're, you know, unfortunately, the time keeps on ticking. So we got to keep it going. And then after us is, you know, whoever it's going to be. But we, you know. What, get, ain't nothing can be ain't nothing can be like our style, dog. We done we done lifted some real shit, man. I was about to say, so you came out more in in the two thousands, right? Uh, you were were you in the nineties? Well, we did the Latino Velvet in the nineties, was it? Or was yeah, that, that nineties? But, but 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 that was the nineties. But I I was in the game with JT and Into Deep and E Forty and Matt yeah. Dre, and I, they were all my friends from day one. So I was in the game. I was just was chilling, watching, soaking it up, watching from the sidelines and gathering information and checking how it works and. And then, yeah, and then we jumped in it, and then I got my record. But I, I didn't go mainstream until 2003. I got my record deal 2003 right. and 2000, 2004 popped off, and I ain't never looked back, man. Right. I always say to this day, like, like our groups like us, bro, we will always have gigs because of our timeless hits. Yeah. And we will always play arenas and stadiums. Do you think, like, the newer, some of the newer rappers could ever potentially reach that level, you know what I'm saying, in the rap game, like today's hip-hop? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, anything's possible. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it, to me, it's the song. Like, we have timeless songs. You know, artists is one thing, but songs are another. And we have, our songs are so timeless that we've made, and that's what keeps us going. Like, it was, it, it's, we're yet to see if they can make a timeless song because they're just coming up. You know what I mean? We've got to wait a while to see how it, and then check the temperature. You feel me? Has anybody sampled any of your music? In, in today's rap? Oh, my God, dog. <laughs> Hell yeah, dog. I get, man. Uh, God dang. I got the greatest lawyer in the world, Dino LaPolte, man. Yeah. Hey, got, you know. Hey, hey, Bass, trip on this. We just hung up with Rodney O, man. And I says, man, if anybody's sitting on the top of the mountain right now, it's got to be him with that, you know, that future and that Metro Boomin track. Yes. And he and he produced it. Oh, did Joe Cooley produce that? Who produced that? I, I think it was, was it Rodney Joe Cooley. Oh, yeah. I think you're right. I think Rodney did produce that. So that's even better. That's even more publishing. If they own the publishing, right? He owns yeah. it all. Yeah, he, owns he owns it all. It all. He said. He said. Andy, oh, they sampled it. Sure. It wasn't even a like a like a replay. They I sampled know. That's the fucking shit. That. And that's better. Like that's like Chris Brown just put my song "Baby I'm Back." Chris Brown just uh, he sampled "Baby I'm Back" on a song called "Press Me." It's like millions of views, and, and I own fifty percent of that song. My Ooh. lawyer makes sure I, I'm. Own, it's all about the ownership. Yeah. See, I got to get so on top Chris, of that, man, because I know Chris be Brown did, my shit. Yeah, if you get a chance, listen to Press Me by Chris Brown and see what he, he hooked it up. And then, of course, you know, they did the EDM version of Sugar Sugar, which, you know, they went number one in like 20 countries. That's so right. That was Who was the group on that again? It was, uh, what the fuck was his name? DJ uh, from Germany. Some motherfucker from Germany. What yeah, was the fuck was his name? They re flipped uh, it. Uh, uh, what was his name, dog? Fuck. Sure, or uh, Robin should not Robin. Yeah, Robin Scholes or some shit. Robin Scholes, right? Robin Scholes. Sugar, sugar. Remake. How many how many views does that have on it? Man, the video. See. Check it out because I don't even know, but I own it. <laughs> <laughs> we I'm, ba- I'm bad at I'm bad at checking all my shit though. I just you know they just show me the checks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm I'm pulling it up, man. All kinds of shit's popping up though. Sugar, sugar, baby, bad. Sugar, sugar from Robin Scholes. Look at Robin Scholes. I just spelled the last name, Robin. Robin S-H-O-A-M-S. Schultz. Oh, there it is. S C H or some shit. Oh, it's called Sugar, right? Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. But it's called ninety percent owned by Bass. Uh, nice. Yeah. That there it is. She got me nine ninety. Let me see here, Sugar. Yeah, featuring Francesco Yates. Yeah, Francisco Sugar. Yates. Yeah, that shit's had 812 right million <laughs> views. Oh, dumb. man. And you get a cut after uh, uh, every one of these spins, right? I get 90%. Nine zero. Fuck. Hey, call one of these little Chicano rappers, man, to <laughs> yeah. tell them to sample Sunday <laughs> afternoon already, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> oh, hey, you got to get, you gotta get one of them them uh worldwide DJs to do that shit on the EDM track because that's what they did. Yeah. Do like a house one. Go international with it. And you own yeah, Sugar that's... Sugar yourself or is that like split yes. with, with other like Frankie and well, guys? I own I, I own the song, but yeah, me, Happy and, and and you know Happy Perez who's the biggest fucking producer in the game of the pop right now. But me, Happy and Frankie, yeah, we, we split the publishing. Yeah. But I own the song. It was on my album. Man, that's what's up, bro. So yeah, it's ownership, man. And I own, and ownership. I always tell people all the time. It's all about that ownership, man. 
that up front one, that quick little up five, ten, fifteen G's. You know what I'm saying? It's happy, it's good for a minute. Yeah. Then you start thinking like, damn, I should have owned my shit, dog. I know that's right. Hey, man, who do you got on the Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney, coming up 420? Uh, I mean, I'm hoping Ryan wins, but I think Devin's just too good. Devin. Right now. Just, I think it's just going to be like a a jab fest, you know what I mean? Like a, a kind of you know boring fight, maybe. But yeah. Put a show on for the people. 12. But, 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 but I'm rooting for Ryan. Right. 12 but, rounds. You know what I'm saying? I'm a real motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? If I had a bet, I'd bet with my brain, not my heart. That's right. You know what I'm saying? If I had to put some money up, man, tell people, bet with your brain, man, not with your heart. I've seen a lot of motherfuckers lose their heart money. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> we had Arnold Barbosa Jr. was supposed to be on today. At last minute, he canceled out. Um, he had some family issues going on, bro. But you ever met Arnold? Oh, uh, yeah, he's good. No, he's a good fighter, though. Real, real, real well-respected, too. Yeah, so the word is he's supposed to uh, fight on that card if one of them can't make it, basically. So Ryan falls out for whatever reason because, you know, he's you been know, on some tell him to get ready. crazy shit. <laughs> <series. laughs> hey, tell, him, told, tell him to get ready, dog, because – Oh, he's like he's voicing it. He's out there, man. I mean, you know, with uh, and then after, did you catch that Roley fight this weekend, Raleigh? The Roley? Oh yeah, yeah. Pitbull, Isaac Pitbull Cruz. My guy. Ooh, that guy's a beast, man. That guy, that guy. In a minute, he's gonna be bigger than Canelo in Mexico. Watch this. Yeah, young. They love Pitbull, dog. They love Pitbull. Pitbull's a different kind of love. Yeah, that's 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 my first time coming across, dude. I will say, and that dude. What? Yeah, oh, man. man, I've been out the game. Isaac don't play, man. For sure. Well, let me. Uh, I'm about to eat these cookies, man. I'm making some chocolate chip cookies, man. Go handle, bro. Hey, Bash, thanks for picking up, here, homie. Man. We'll 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 yeah, wrap no. soon, and in that song, I'll, I'll follow up with you, my G. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I got you, bro. I got you. Uh, uh, just uh, send it. I, I wish you could be there when I do it. I always like to. You know, it's, I get it done more when someone's there with me to do the song. Shit. Instead of email. If I send my email, that's just going to sit for a minute. Well, I mean, if you ever on this side, you got shows time. Coming up. Don't Man. we got some shows coming up? Yeah, we got shows. I mean, if we want, I'll bring a mic on the road. It ain't nothing yeah, in my I laptop. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get a studio or something. It's, it's Nathan. Okay. In a minute, big dog. Right. Thanks for taking it. All right, y'all. All right. I'll be cool. All, All right. right. Peace. Baby Bash, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. He said, last time I check up, my check up. Dropped a lot of knowledge, for sure. Yeah. Shout out to Super Chat, everybody up in there. Man, that's it. What else we got, man? That's it for the news. That's it. That's it for the happenings. I got to call somebody else. (laughs) I don't want this to be the ODM guest line. I mean. I mean, we could talk about new music. I know you were uh, rating some new stuff the other day. Oh, when you were uh, here Doing it live from that same seat right there. Yeah. I was tapped in with you. Shout out to bit. Bozo. Bozo got a new album out, uh, Southside Logo. Just support what we can, you know what I mean? Um, some of our guests that have been on the Blockout podcast and those that we would like to have on. Shout out to Young Drummer. You know, he's got some new music out as well. He, drummer stays dropping, though, huh, Moons? Oh, uh, yeah. That's what we dro- What do you say? He's dropping every week? Every Wednesday. Every, every Wednesday. Wednesday. Every Wednesday. Wednesday. Pumping them out, yeah. dog. And you shoot a video while we were there and have it too. Well, we started doing that thing on the blockout too. I don't know if you guys saw. I don't know if you want to let them know. If, uh, yeah, so we're getting our tech. Oh, this internet's not doing us anything, <laughs> any justice. But uh, on a blockout Twitch, guys, if you guys get a chance, um, go check us out over there or just give us a follow. Take some time, sign up. I want to start, you know, doing a. Uh, like how do I explain it? Like like a like if you have a music video you want to like uh, premiere on our channel or like yeah you throw it up yeah I'll do it on YouTube but YouTube likes to fuck with you man they like to you know demonetize or flag it or even block it like I just I was just on a couple of nights ago and they already blocked it to where like that video that I went live on just can't be played so Twitch is another outlet and Twitch thing about them is they let you go on forever i think it's like 48 hours or something yeah. like that right danny three days man so we yeah. thinking about doing our own radio station on twitch so yeah. we're calling it the blackout bangers and you know you guys got it. music yeah. send it over we just like he was doing it this morning i did it last night but i just put up the flyer and then this morning he woke up and did the music video thing so yeah that's when we were like oh shit you know, blackout so. bangers. So jump over Twitch, uh, the blackout podcast. If you just search, and like I said, uh, 
whether you create an account or you don't. It only takes a couple minutes, but we're just going to be banging out the music. Sometimes we'll have the video, sometimes we won't. If we're promoting something, for sponsors out there as well, yeah, you know, crazy. we'll just run your ad up there, you know what I mean? And we'll just play music. And, you know, I'll be in there, uh, Danny, we get Crystal, like, and just run that shit like a you know radio station, as you would say. It's real easy too. And they won't fuck with us. That's the beauty of it. It's live. <clears throat> so we'll we'll give you guys more heads up on that. But anything else, man? Yeah, man. Have you seen that uh, new sexy red music video with Drake and Soldier Boy cameos? No. Damn it. So I wish we could play it. Sexy red and it's who else? It's called Get It Sexy. Drake and Soldier Boy make a cameo, and a, and supposedly fabulous, but I didn't see him. Mm. but it's it's actually a really dope video like i saw someone say that she's like the female lil john so say what you will she's talking about her coochie on this song too it's pretty graphic but <laughs> but the video itself is dope it, it's giving like 2000 early 2000s vibes yeah already watched it a starting out with the sony tv right here i'm seeing i'm saying i'm watching the video right here it's very oh. cinematic though there's like acting and shit and honestly it's, it's kind of catchy man but all right, we'll, we'll go check for it. CP said it. Recommended. Sexy Red, get it sexy. Ski. Is it like, is this the one that's saying hands on my knees? No. Uh, no. Oh. That's, that's Isn't that Drake? Baby Daddy. Yeah, that's Drake's. That's and he's featured on there. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, I was all lost on that one. <laughs> She's on it, though. She's what? She's on it. Yeah. Was, yeah. She sings okay. that little hook. But yeah. it's Drake's song, right? It's Drake's song. Okay, 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 okay. But yeah, I know not sexy red's not for uh, all the old school heads or whatnot. But you know, at the same time, it's, it music's changed. Oh, Definitely. and then oh yeah, and then that fool's in there too. I, I'm not really big on streamers, but Aiden, Aiden, what's his name? Ross. Adam Ross. Adam Ross is in it, and they got him doing an American Pie cameo. Uh, if you know, you know. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's just a really interesting video. Odin Ross, what's his name? Aiden. Is he an influencer? He's a he's yeah. a streamer, yeah, of some sort. That's right. But yeah, just like really innovative is exactly. So we got the new school, the fucking streamers, yeah. and then we got the old school cameos. I just thought it was really, really clever, really dope shit. And if you're an artist funding your own music video, it should look like that. Like that's what's up. Clean. They should. Right. You'd be surprised how many artists, you know, yeah. will will limit their budgets, you know, because they want to cut certain places. No, yeah. Hey, tell me, what's a good budget for a video, dog? What Ooh, do you think? Good question. Just depends on. Honestly, it comes down to the lighting. If you want to make a movie, what are you going to put? We're going to charge. Depends on the length of the movie. There's a lot of there's a lot of factors. Like, if you make a music I, video, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna shoot a music video, like I just quoted somebody the other day, uh, based on what they wanted, fifteen hundred bucks. That's just that's that's. Uh, I feel like that's on the lower end. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, that's on the lower end. That's and that's not. I'm not getting paid on that. That's all going to production lighting. That's all going full to, production. Yeah, to like getting some paying other people to do the jobs. Costume. You know. Not even costume. That's just strictly lighting, and then oh. the person who does. You charging fifteen hundred dollars a music video? For pure lights, dude. That's, that's equipment. That's money. Yeah. You have a lot of these directors have lights already. Not the kind of lights that we're using, bro. It's that's like, what I'm saying. We're, we're using studio lights. Like you. These lights up here, they're different wattages than you would in a different in a music video. Are we talking music videos, like yes. rap videos. <laughs> yes, yeah. fifteen hundred. Yeah. Hey, when I shot the money maker video in L.A., how were those lights? I mean, they were cool for what. Again, there's there's different levels. Like people will make it work what they got, and then there's people who you know that I'm trying to. That's be true like, though. I will attest to that. Where you can make it work? Yeah, if you can make it work with what you got, dope. Make it work with what you got for as long as possible. Because it's not cheap. Like, really good lights and really good, like, proper stage lighting, it's it's not cheap, dude. But at some point, do you go, it, it all depends on who's shooting it and who's producing it. Uh, well, well, yeah, people got different styles. Some people are known for their styles, yeah. you know? Directors. Well, don't you think to, like, the average viewer, lighting wouldn't even matter? I think it makes a difference. And maybe if you're on the production side, you're going to see, but as long as you got somewhat of a good lighting, the video's going to be clean, right? But there's Not a difference, like like that sexy red video. It yeah. looks very cinematic. Like I can't explain it. I don't know how they filmed it or did what, but there must have been a, a good budget take, for that. Not just ca not just lighting, but you also got to take into account what kind of camera they shot with on that. The color grading they went into that. Yeah, service, like Crystal you know? said, you got to have a budget for that. Yeah. I mean, there's like you levels. You got to have a to label like, behind you. Yeah, anybody can go with like a thousand dollars and shoot this right here. You and can shoot do a low budget. Decent. Oh shit, he dropped yeah. five hundred, y'all. But 
you know, but at 15. He's down to a thousand. <laughs> he's down to a thousand. <laughs> Let's see, we you can know. get him down to five. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? 400 an ounce. Damn. <laughs> give, him, give him a 12 pack of Happy Dad. I'll do it. I'll do it for a six deal. pack. So it's a puzzle. Here's my Zell. Right? Nah, but like a really good budget. Because, like, Alex, my friend, would be the best one to tell you how much, like, a good, decent budget would be to start off with something. Even if you're just filming like a single shot scene, yeah, he would be able to tell you like, oh yeah, you're gonna want to use this much because, you know. Let me ask you this though, Tomas. Yeah. So if somebody's just coming up, right? Yeah, they shot maybe a few videos, and they start out at fifteen hundred. Uh, do you think that's around where they need to be at in terms of what they need to be charging if they're a new? Uh, well, okay, so videographer or whatever. So so. What you're charging versus what your what the budget is is totally different, because um, that's a director fee. You know that's like the the fee for you doing that. Mm. Um, but my understanding, I mean, not every director does it not want to get paid. But I mean, there's some videos where you just tell the artist like, okay, look, we're gonna it's gonna cost you this much to shoot the video, but all that is going to to the production. That's gonna go to pay this person. It's gonna pay to pay, you know, this other person over here. You know, it just depends because I know directors who have shot videos that don't take money back. You know, they don't get paid for what they do. They just, they're doing it because they're trying to add more. Yeah. You know, like, I'm not, like on the video I was talking about earlier, I'm not going to get paid on it. I'm, I'm, you know, I told them, like, I, I'm not looking to get paid. I want to get more. You just want to give the artist the best quality work you can provide. Yeah. Even if it costs you giving up your cost, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I see that. You know. Because, I mean, like I said, like going back to a, what Moose's original question is, yeah, you know, you can shoot a, a low-budget video, but, I mean, at some point, you can be able to tell it's low-budget. At some know? point, unless it's in good hands. There's other directors, uh, like Spike Jones. If you do something with him, he might have, like, a, a low-budget approach because he's very artistic and creative, right? Mm -hmm. But it might just come out with his flavor. So then on that end, you're paying for, like, him as that director to do the shit for you, right? Yeah. And some people will purposely, like, one thing I like about Turtle, who shoots the videos for Elijah Brown, is he keeps a low budget, but he focuses a lot on the color grading. Yeah, so exactly. That's that's where you can also, that's where proper lighting will also come into play, is color grading. You know, that will make everything pop properly, and everything will look good, and, you know, amazing. Mm -hmm. And that's the filmer's yeah. perspective, too, I mean, it's you all know? about the cam oh, my bad. Oh, no, yeah. I'll go it's for all it. about the cameraman, fool. Sunsets was very inexpensive, and shit came out clean as fuck. Yeah, exactly. It was, it was. And he shot that on a, on a GH5. Yep. You know? I'm and saying it's, like all, it's the cameraman, not the camera. Yeah. And living life. That well, that goes so back to what I was just saying. It, it It's who's filming and yeah. who's put color grading. and Yeah. Um, But then again, the bigger budgets, uh, I, I, I really don't know. I, I couldn't really tell you. Back in the day was different. The Hype Williams days, yeah. <laughs> like when videos yeah. were fucking million dollars. But, that hype, was crazy. but to have a music video by Hype Williams, that would be worth it in my opinion. If I could swing that as an artist, I would, because he has iconic ass music right. videos that are still top tier to this day. He has a name. He has a brand. Who he shot that look. shit? Hype Williams. Oh. You could tell it's a Hype Williams video. You know, he has a certain style. Yeah. He's one of those guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's dope. Know. That's interesting. All right, all right, all right. That's what's up. Cause I know some fools just be <laughs> shooting their videos on iPhones, fool, and like that. I ain't hey, taking away from that, but you know, work with no, what you there's, got. There's whole ass videos that have been, you know, Apple pushed whole commercials. You said where, ho? No, whole commercials. Oh, Spencer. Where they said like, hey, this commercial was shot on an iPhone. You know, yeah, and they they did that. They did that with the uh, just that's to promote the phone too, though. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, but it it shows the the photographer and videographer. You know, like Takashi oh, yeah, Takashi did a, his one of his music videos. Yeah, Treyway Homie Six Nine. He filmed yeah. a music music video off the phone, and I he can't even remember said it. What movie it was? But there was another movie too recently where they didn't film it on like a homie. production level camera. They filmed it on something like mine. You know, it was filmed on a smaller DSLR camera. Mm. And the director said he purposely filmed it that way because he wanted to be able to get certain shots on a on a gimbal or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it had. It came down to, like, the weight of the camera, and that's why he chose that camera. Mm. Um, Shit, but at the end of the day, isn't 4K 4K? Does it matter what the camera is? Not necessarily because it, cause some t it just depends where you're going to place it. Because remember, social media has compressed, like, they, they have their own, algorithm that compresses your file to down to 1080p yeah so i'd say it matters if you want it if you want your shit to look 
the top notch so when it gets compressed, it still looks good. Because if yeah. you export something at 1080p, you know, and it's going to be 1080p, it's going to look okay. But if you export something at 4K... It's going to look better than 1080. Yeah, even when it gets compressed down to that. I remember yeah. there was a time where uh, a lot of music videos was like, oh, your music video ain't shit if it isn't shot on a red camera. Like yeah. red cameras. A Komodo red, yeah. yeah. Well, well, is that 4K or what's there? I um, mean, that's so it just depends what, what generation of camera you're shooting with now. I don't you know, know, this is like early 2010s, you know. Uh, those uh, early 2010s ones, I think I wanted, I could be wrong. I want to say they were probably about 4K. Yeah, yeah back were. then, yeah. Yeah, because I think now they're, they're up to 8K. Oh, God. You know, shit like that. Yeah. You know. But at the time, that that wasn't as common. The, the iPhones weren't up yeah. to all But, that. like, going back to, again, to what he was, what Moon was saying is that it does come down to the, to the, the director, comes down to what they're going to do in post and how they set up their shots. And is if there's a story, you know, is there a story to your to your video? They're you know? storyboarding it yeah. for you, are yeah. You, you know, are you storyboarding this? Is it going to be just a straight shot where you're like, like, and don't take it the wrong way, but it's like, is it going to be a shot where it's just you with three bitches around you shaking their ass? You know, like, like that's different. Easy five hundred thousand views. That's an easy. <laughs> that's an easy simple video. Sunsets versus something that's like, you know, uh, one of my favorite videos I think I, I've seen before. Was the um, oh man system of a down video for toxicity? Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's a dope ass video. It is well well concepted. You know, but I guarantee that was probably a close to hundred thousand dollar budget for that video. You know, the, from the effects that they used into it to how they shot it to how they staged everything. Yeah, because you know, the higher the higher level you go as an artist, you know, they're gonna there's your videos are gonna become more, you know. Not very complicated, but they're going to be more complex. Mm. You if know. you want them to be, I remember at the height of their career, Blink One Eighty Two, they did uh, that that rock show song. Yeah. And for the music video, they just took their budget uh, of like the cash that it would that they were going to use for that music video, and they just shot. They like they rented a van. They took that cash and they're just throwing it, doing wild shit with yeah. it. That's spending. Drake the did the same thing with the uh, with uh, what was it? Uh, oh man, I can't remember. Uh, Drake did it too. Yeah, he did it in the video. Blink did it first. I'm scared. So he gave out money. <laughs> yeah, he gave out money. He basically oh, said God's plan. That, yeah, God's plan. He says mm. that they took a budget for that video and they just, you know, they not randomly they donated it. Yeah, they donated to people. They were in but the video. they documented it in yeah. a really low budget way yep. so that the budget could just fly. Yeah. Shout out to Still <laughs> Authentic. He had some uh, words of wisdom. Till you get sponsors, keep building an audience and provide visuals. CapCut does wonders. Exactly. I like CapCut. I just, I personally just. Don't like doing shit on my phone. I'm yeah. a, I'm a laptop. I gotta see that shit. I'm big, the opposite. You know? I like I'm editing like, oh, off my phone. Man, <laughs> I like the scroll. I like the feel of a mouse. That's just me though. I was like no. that, but then now I'm like used to all this and, shit. And so. I totally agree with you. You're him spoiled, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you guys know who La Russell is? Yeah, La perfect Russell, example. La Russell is somebody I follow heavily, and I, I I send this stuff to you guys a lot. You guys gotta check yeah. out his content. Like. He's right. You don't always have to shoot a big budget video, especially if you're an upcoming artist. Speak on it. Focus on small, short form content. Yes. He says, I think he was using an example that if you drop 12 songs, a, if you drop, if you have a, a plan of dropping 12 songs a year or dropping like a certain amount of songs, he's like, drop 12, drop one a month. By the end of the year, you drop, you combine all the songs or, uh, yeah, you combine them all and you drop the album, but you drop every one of them individually so yeah. they gain their views. And by the time you drop the album, the album, you know, collectively goes into yeah. the, all those songs collectively go to the album. Yep. As well as all those views. Moons those and numbers. I were talking about the same thing. Yeah. yeah. It all like a cru- a cruise to towards your yeah, album once yeah. it drop. Yeah. But I agree, man. Like I told Moons this dozens of times, like, man, I'm like, why even spend money on a music video? If if people's attention spans nowadays are only just quick, you scroll, that's if you don't catch me in the first ten seconds, boom. So I'd rather just sit here in one place, and a lot of cats are doing it, like La Russell, like, uh, what's the dude from uh, San Diego, Bishop? Bishop, I can't remember his last name. That's how I came across his shit. Mm-hmm. One fucking scene, rap your verse, that's it, boom, done. And then maybe later on, if the, and it's worth spending on it, spending money on it, then do it. But I think it's all within your budget, though, too. Yeah, and, and that's why, but see, that's why La Russell pushes it the way he does, because it doesn't affect the budget. It doesn't need a budget. If you film the stuff yourself on your phone, yeah. using a little tripod and just doing a quick, you know, like 
bar verse. It's visual, no matter yeah, what. It's a visual that you're pushing into and you're pushing out there. Because, like, who was it? Uh, Hazard? He does the freestyle. What is it? Yes. The freestyle 40 Ounce Fridays. Yeah, yep. 40 Ounce Fridays. So, yep. like, even though he goes and does, like, a long break, he can break that content up into smaller pieces and then just tell it, like, end it at, like, what you would consider um, – uh, cliffhanger, and then just push them to the rest of the content. Same with these YouTube. DJs. Like, shout outs to, like, you know, DJs like DJ Livia. Shout outs to DJ Devin Hype. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that, they stay on the social media and they do these little short clip videos and it keeps people interested. It shows them little skills here or there under 60 seconds. That, yeah. that's, that goes a long that's way. Their work. But do you think that stands the test of time? Just like having these little TikTok music videos? No, well, not TikTok. I'm just, I mean, it doesn't have to be TikTok, but yeah, you know, you can do Instagram, you can do. You know, even Facebook. But does it stand the test of time, do you think? I mean, it's a trend right now that that's what's popping. Uh, and that's where the attention is mostly. But having these music videos that are timeless, you know, from si since the very first damn music video, yeah. those can those are those are, you know, ongoing. They live on. Ooh, and then for people, that's a good point. For DJs like me and DB, DB has the, the video set up, like the yeah, VDJ yeah. set up. I don't, but I have videos that I could use. But even just having them there, like that elevates your set. You know, having those visuals and those visuals are their own little time capsule. They become timeless. So and in the grand scheme, music videos, that's part of the that's part of the artistry. So if you have a music video from the 90s that Lighter Shade of Brown did, comparing that to the 2024 Lighter Shade of Brown, like the, it all works in perpetuity, I feel like. Yeah. And you can just clip those and then put the clips on these uh, these little TikTok reverse it. Yeah, okay. reverse. But you it. always have that one, you know, cut to go back to. You can always go back to the living life music video. Well, it's like boom. like we go back to saying earlier, like it all depends on your budget too. Yeah. Budget's yeah. a factor because if I don't have enough money to spend on a music video, but I got an iPhone that's already paid for, I could just shoot a sixty second verse here. Tomorrow I'll do the second verse, and yeah, it's up. But then if I start seeing it blow up social media. It's like then then I'll you know then I'll invest into the music video. It's like when record labels put out singles back in the day. We didn't get videos off top. Hell no, because budgets for videos were through the roof. So it was like oh, if your song is gets played on radio and it starts to bubble, mm -hmm. then we'll give you. If you start selling singles, then we'll give you a video. You had to earn that right. I just think it's crucial for artists to have those visuals like straight up, not just the TikToky ones. You know, like if I were t to be an artist or rap artist, whatever, I would want to create a budget to make something pop like that because to me that's like that's just part of the artistry like that's what So you rather it. wait then is what you're saying I mean, to yeah. come up with the end. Yeah, not everything has, has to be popcorn. I get that it could give you some momentum and that it's right there and you have a phone. Everyone has a phone already. Everyone's checking it. Yeah. You might as well use it to its capacity. But I don't know, like I just But and and to kind of like cuz I agree with you. Like I feel like vis music videos are what are the thing mm -hmm. you know that's that's what like you said they're that's timeless. where trends come from yeah. mm -hmm. so for me you know my understanding of what LeBrus was saying is that you know from from one a a budgeting standpoint yes you know this is what you should do and to a marketing standpoint like you said it causes it causes that motion for them and yeah have a video though work your way to where that song or that clip whatever you're working on that's like your early visual but then you tell them like music music videos gonna be is working on in the background or you start working with someone to put together an actual music video for the content you're putting together. Do you think that uh, these reels we're talking about before the actual music video comes out, do you think it ruins it visually for well, the actual video that's to come? Because it's kind of like, I already seen this visual with you rapping this song. Are you going to put yourself somewhere else in, an, in another uh, scene, environment, on the music video? Well, I mean, the difference, I, I say it would be different because... It, if you think about it, what you're doing instantly, what you're doing on your phone, you're doing right there on the spot, and you're doing it like in your room or something. It doesn't have to be like a produced piece of content. It's just something that you, you know, you put out that's quick for your for whatever you're trying to push, whether it's new uh, a verse for the new song or whatever. But if you want to go where you have something well produced and you have put together, then yeah, I wouldn't leak that yet. I wouldn't put that much out into it like that stuff out until you like know the video is going to be ready to go so you yeah. can use the video as that short form as well you know yeah i'm old school with it too man so i'm like shit, every time we record something i don't even want to put it out like i don't even because you know you always there's that fear of, i come from the days of, of people biting your shit or stealing your shit but I, in 2024 it's like there's nothing that has been i was gonna say written under the sun that hasn't been done before take take a page out of marvel's book and embrace it embrace when something gets leaked 
Mm-hmm. You know, move into it and, you know, go into it. Leak, Use that momentum. Yeah, leak a little bit more, you know. Yeah. Mar- Marvel does it all the time. At this point, now they kind of set up their leaks. They just did it with the Thunderbolts, you know, one of the newer movies. They, they, they Something leaked a while back, and now they had one of their actors purposely go live on Instagram. You know, it's like when, mm. it's like when uh, the guy who plays Incredible, Incredible Hulk, he went, li- he went live by accident during the filming of Endgame. Yeah. You know, and then they play it off like he got in trouble and shit like that, but it really wasn't. He was just, he was trying to put out more content. Yeah, that's smart marketing. You know, so, yeah, you know, but does your content that you produce, like, visually have to be the same as a music video? No, it doesn't have to be the same. It could be different. It It can be different. Well, it's it's just, it serves as as a reminder that this is coming or this is here, but here's, like, an alternative visual to it. But if you want to push something out early, like, if Moose wanted to drop a new song tomorrow or drop, like, a verse from a new song that he's going to drop in two weeks, you know, drop half that verse that he, you know, does, you know, rapping into, into his phone, and then two weeks later, drops a music video. Mm-hmm. You know, just drops it out randomly, kind of like... It's subliminal. Yeah. I feel like the rap girlies, since they're the ones moving and grooving uh, in the mainstream right now, what they do is, like, uh, they'll go live, and they'll have that shit, their, their song playing in the background, that but too. it's all subtle, yeah. and then they'll start, they'll start, like, dancing... And, you know, like grooving to it. And then, boom, that's a clip that goes viral. So that's one. That's one little uh, subliminal advert. Uh-huh. Then they'll actually make a TikTok where they're wearing, you know, like T-shirt, no bra. And they're still just like lip syncing to this track that yeah. isn't even fucking out yet. And they go, stay tuned. Yeah. Video coming next. That's where me and Moons go. What? There was music playing? <laughs> <laughs> what music? <laughs> exactly. I just so saw it's, titties. <laughs> it's, it's, sub- it's subliminal like that, you know, and that's where those reels come in because they're they're giving it to you over and over and over again, but in in more informal ways. And then boom, here comes the full on production with the music video, with the makeup, with the outfits and the costumes oh. and the set. You know, yeah, that's yeah. the rollout. Yeah, I feel like. some of the cats in the super chat saying you just got to be creative with it. Bottom line, yeah. If you want to get a good example of how you should handle like. Not just working with La Russell, but like seeing what La Russell does. I mean, but if you want to get another good example of somebody else who does something like well, um, I know you guys know him, E. G. Uh, you know E. G. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So E. G. Does that like he he works with a lot of um, influencers, uh, influencers and musicians in TikTok, mm. and he works with them and he helps them put together their TikToks to like help them grow. Like uh, I can't remember what song it was, but there was three songs. I know in 20, I think it was in 2022 that mm. his influencer group of TikTokers that he works with had like direct effect on building that song up. Mm. Um, oh shit, I wish I could remember the song, but. Like the song blew up because of the video type yeah, shit? Yeah, like the TikTok shit that they pushed. But it's it's, again, like, and you met you met EG that night you were there at the concert. I saw yeah, him. I met him here before too. Yeah, yeah so EG, like, he, like that dude is genius when it comes to that <coughs> TikTok shit. You know, I, I, I can't explain anything that he can do like, like how he does it, I, I can't explain it. I just know whatever the fuck he does, it fucking <laughs> works. Super yeah, brilliant. shout out to EG, the playmaker, little <laughs> homie. I remember when he was rapping when he was a little more close. Yeah, he's a little rapper <laughs> He worked too. with Fora. Uh, he worked with, he's worked with a bunch of influence. So yeah, it wouldn't be a bad idea getting him on the podcast either, man. Pick yeah. his brain a little bit, yeah. yeah. That's it. Maybe somebody else to, to talk to. Yeah. Yo, I'm starving like Marvin, man. I don't know about you guys, yeah. but same Z's. About to get hungry. up. We're at two hours right now. <laughs> <Puro meat>. <laughs> <laughs> two hours of puro glitch. Let's go get a keto burger. Glitch man. mode. Hey, we apologize, guys. It's not on us. It's internet. I don't know. It was raining hard yesterday, <laughs> and today I don't know if that carried over. To that. I don't know. The internet was working good earlier. As soon as we went live. <laughs> I don't know what's up, but we do thank you guys for watching. If you're uh, listening to this on the playback, that doesn't affect you because you don't get to see it. You get to hear it. So hopefully the audio was cool. I want to thank Baby Bash for tapping in. We also, uh, Rodney O, uh, for tapping in on the show today. And uh, th- once again, thanks you know to our sponsors and Latinx Hip Hop, um, Them Damn Mexicans, both on YouTube, two separate podcasts, and Herrera 